20 stories now. The Church of What's Happening Now is presented by On It. The Church of What's Happening Now is thrilled to introduce you to Zeal. Zeal is the app that brings massages right to your door. Try out Zeal, that's Z-E-E-L, right now and get $25 off of your first massage. To do that, you're going to enter promo code at checkout. You can go to zeal.com or they have an iPhone and Android app. Go to zeal.com, enter promo code CHURCH at checkout to get $25 off of your first massage. The show is also brought to you by hellotushy.com. The days are back. The church of what's happening now is thrilled to introduce you to hellotushy.com. Hellotushy.com makes portable devices that spray your butt completely clean with water. It sounds too good to be true. I love it. Go to hellotushy.com right now slash church to get 10% off of your order. That's hellotushy.com slash church to get 10% off. I'm happy you're here. You were just going to sit there fucking anyway. Give me some volume there, Lee Syed. It's the Church of What's Happening Now, Wednesday, February 1st, bitches. What happened to January? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Just when you thought it was safe, motherfuckers. Lee Syed. Esther Cool, Joey Diaz, the Diversity Crew, in the house. Bam, 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 bam. Are you fucking kidding me or what? We are at church. At the motherfucking church. What's your bench made out of? Is it birch? Who's your favorite Kreischer? Birch. Oh shit. Church. We at church. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Uncle Joey here. Direct from the Voodoo Lounge. <coughs> With his favorite nephew, Lee Syatt. And his favorite niece, Esther fucking Cuckoo, in the motherfucking house. Direct from Miami Beach, man. Uncle Joey Diaz. Miami Beach. Miami yeah. Beach. That's right, in these Zika streets. Oh, shit. So oh, shit. I brought, you a, I brought you a couple of vials of some Zika, what is that called? Zika vaccine? Zika in juice. case you want to impregnate anyone. Oh, you shit. You know, throw that, throw that Joey Diaz superpower star spermage out there into oh, the universe. Oh, shit. How bad is the Zika down there? They disappeared, right? They, I mean, it's weird because at first they were like, oh, it's really dangerous. Watch out. Don't go outside. We're bug spray everywhere. And then now the World Health Organization is like, don't worry, it's not as it's not as threatening as we thought originally. Scary pregnant women. But yeah, it's fucking scary, scary. Latino scary. pregnant. I was watching women. this news segment of this pregnant lady. She was outside and the news people were at her house. She's endangering her baby and herself by doing this stupid news segment. For what? Just so people can Facebook you, I saw you on TV. Stay in the house with the fucking shades drawn yeah, and shit. Yeah, she, she comes out, out of her TNT house juice on with, top of with the cameras at her house going, yeah, I don't leave the house much. I'm like, bitch, you're outside right you're now. You're outside. Get you're in like the fucking house. Risking this. There's a Zika mosquito Zika somewhere. Getting your baby. It's fucking crazy that that shit's going to. That is like that's gonna affect our life. Like, when is the Zika movie coming out? Like, when is oh, when already, is too soon? They already have how, the Zika. How long do you have to wait? Fucking sci-fi already got a fucking movie with that blonde chick. What's her name? The, the chick. Scarlett Johansson. No, 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 no. The, the beat up one. Oh. The one that was in Sharknado. Tara Reid. Tara yep. Reid, and she goes on vacation, and, she, and the fucking uh, bugs crawl in her purse, and when she opens up the purse, they all fly out of the oh, party. Oh, the Sharknado? No, no, with Zika Nato. What is this it called? Is, this is going to be her with this oh. fucking sci-fi, <laughs> Zika Nato. She goes to fucking Brazil. She comes back. She opens up her luggage, and all these mosquitoes fly out and bite everybody in fucking Brentwood. Oh. And that's it. Nobody's killed more people since would OJ. You, would you rather get killed by Zika or sharks? 
oh, I don't fucking know. I hate those type of questions. I just want to <laughs> not be bothered. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want people asking me creepy questions like that. Speaking I know. Of, I, I'm really creepy. Speaking of NATOs, you, you're from Miami. I don't understand. Like, I was talking to a friend of ours who was down in Miami during one of the big hurricanes a couple months ago. And she's just like, oh, yeah, the hurricane shutters. It's a party. That does not make sense. Like, it's almost like hurricanes out here. Hurricanes, I don't get how it's just, oh, it's a hurricane party. We all might die and our houses might fall in. But it's like earthquake parties here. I don't have earthquake parties. You don't? No. Well, you just don't like parties? Well, we don't know when an earthquake is coming. It's not like the news. Oh, right. No, no, no. It's like Miami. Oh, my God. It's not announced. My friend, our friend went to Florida, and when she landed two days later, that big storm was going to hit. She so went to she some. Got she, out went of to there. See, she went to a family's house, and they're like, "What are you worried about? We got beer, we got reefer, we shuttered the windows. We're gonna have a party. It's like a snowstorm. Yeah, it's a party. You it's a snow fun. day. Ain't it's nobody gonna work day. tomorrow, right? So yeah. fuck it. Let's get fucked up and see the devil. We're we gonna do run from my houses. The worst that's gonna happen is the power gonna go off. Perfect. Perfect. Power goes off. That means somebody gets kissed is not supposed to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or molested. Or molested. It depends on your point of view. Well, it depends how many beers you had. Depends Depending how many beers. The, on if you're the, the molest, victim had, yeah. Molestar or sure. molestee. It's fucking crazy. What do you want to do? You want to sit there in horror? Play Scrabble. Think about how many things you've gone into, and they haven't been as bad as you thought they were going to be. And then you tropical, go, fuck. How did tropical I, storms. How did I fuck my head up so much into thinking this? was going to be so bad. The same thing happens... Because television... The media. The media tell you... Those, first off, those weathermen are 50-50. They're 50-50. On a good day. On a good day, they're 50 fucking 50. This fucking guy here, Dallas Reigns, <laughs> that dude is always wrong. I like when he gives you what time. Said, Stop! Stop! Don't tell me the time, fucko. He always says, about 1 o'clock, storms will be coming. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're coming in at 4. I could tell you that when I wake up in the morning, look at no, the fucking but sky. I, I went to a hurricane preparedness meeting, and I learned a lot. What did you learn? I learned the safest place. Where do you think the safest place to be during a hurricane? In your basement. No, Florida doesn't have basements. It's where? all swamps underneath. So where's the safest place to be? You go in the bathtub and put a mattress over you. That's right, in the bathtub. That can save your life. Tornado, you go in the basement. But... A hurricane, because all these trees are going to fall, and your roof is going to fall, so cover something. What's the biggest object in your house, right, in a natural disaster? A mattress. What else they tell you? You got to pack food and shit they like have, that? Yeah, they have all this food that, like, like army food, where you could just, like... Add water. Add or... water, yeah. And and these meals, prepared to go meals. There's, like, an acronym for them. I forgot what it was. MREs, right? Yeah, meals ready to eat. Yeah, like that's what the army uses. I have an earthquake kit. I mean, it's, I got. I, mean, I did it when I first moved here. They sell them. People got what's, me so worked up when I moved here. Water? Uh, what's, no, uh, I, I have a water bottle that has a filter in it. Just so I do have water in my house, but I have a water bottle with filter. I um, have AM, AM radio, solar powered radio. Uh, I don't know if I have that. I have uh, clothes. I have some batteries. I have one in my car and I have one in my house. It's, but I haven't changed it it's in like six years, so I have like six year old uh granola bars in there. I don't even really but I don't know. I like when I first moved here I was terrified of them. I was terrified of earthquakes. I was terrified also, but then I looked at my uncle. My uncle's lived here since nineteen fucking sixty. You know, something like nineteen sixty. You know, he's fucking. And he eight. doesn't have doesn't he scars from hurricanes, uh, from earthquakes. From earthquakes, no. I I'm not scared because when I first came to California when I was twelve I had an earthquake. There was an earthquake here when I was here for two weeks. What year was when you were 12? What year was that? It was like 1994. Yeah. Yeah, Northridge. 93. Oh, so I mean, no. No, I mean, it wasn't It wasn't a big earthquake. It was a tiny a one. A tiny one. So that's why I'm not scared of earthquakes because I've never seen, I've never been in like a crazy. A destructive one, yeah. Yeah. I've well, just they're like, say, they've been just, saying for years we're going to have a destructive one here and. You wake up here every morning, you do the best you can. All I pray for, it's not in the middle of the fucking night when you're sleeping and trees are going through your fucking thing and you, the, the ground opens up and swallows you while you're fucking sleeping. That's a horrible <laughs> no, As long as you're in go. one of those blocks where you're living on a flat block, how much damage can it do? Unless, you know, it's the one, this houses that are on the hills that I think are scary during an earthquake. Don't those you think? Those motherfuckers started falling three <laughs> nights ago. Yeah. Uh, Demi Lovato's house. 
No. During the during the rain? Somebody the other day on Laurel Camp had to close. It's closed. Oh, holy she just, shit. She just bought the house for eight <gasps> mil. She didn't even move in yet. Eight Wait. million dollar house. Hasn't moved in yet. And the house. Demi the, Lovato? One of those. Demi Lovato or the other one. Kind of cute singer. Yeah. I, don't, I, I don't really Yeah, that sounds like it. The side of the fucking mountain went down. Holy shit. In her front yard. Did she get insurance get in. before she bought it? I don't it? know. I don't know. It's five five people live on the block. So wow. there's five houses on the block. All of them pretty much got, they can't go in and out of their house. That shit petrifies Yesterday, me. I was. Fuck that shit. All those houses on Laurel Canyon, when you're going downhill and they're real close to the road. Uh-uh. I don't give a fuck if they want $10. For that. I'll buy a house <laughs> in Detroit before, I, before I'll buy a house up there. Yesterday, there was a fire on the sidewalk from a gas pipe, just like on the street. Where? Just, I don't know, somewhere in L.A. I don't know where I was, but... You saw it? I saw it. Okay, like, you saw it. Like, the, the ambulance came, I mean, the fire trucks came, and we were all like, what's going on? It's so loud, and the sidewalk was on fire, and it would not go out. It was a little flame. It was like this big. It was like a tiny, cute well, little yesterday, flame. yesterday, some fucking dude stabbed three dudes. At, at a Jack in the Box, right there on Sunset, by by where we Amoeba, used to, yeah, by Amoeba. That's my fucking battleground. God damn it! You know how many times I walked on that fucking street when I saw him at the corner swipe at the chick? They got the video of him swiping at the white chick and her running backwards, and then that's the he went of... into a he went into a Jack in the Box. Lee, aren't you happy you went to Jack in the Box yesterday at lunchtime? Uh, well, that's where Sneak I was when it. I went to uh, whatever it's called Roscoe's, and I was walking on that block. So that's fucking, it's scary. And like a couple months, like it's just getting weird out there. Like that guy who just killed a girl with a shotgun. Remember that a couple months ago on like Sunset or Hollywood Boulevard? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In broad daylight? Yeah, just in broad yeah, daylight. Came yeah, came up to a girl and just shot her. Oh. And then they found out something crazy. Like so he worked with her. He had quit the job. Something fucking just, listen, man, that's the type of shit that makes you think. To, like if I was single... I didn't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. But with the baby and my wife, yeah. they walk to the zoo sometimes. Some guys just there stabbing But even if you're single, you should give a fuck. I, I wouldn't give a fuck about me. I wouldn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like I wouldn't really be concerned. Though. I go, you know what? I got to pack a gun. I got to get a bulletproof vest. That type of shit. But I guess that's why guys get married. So that you could give a fuck. No, it's it's a it's a weird expression. Like I wouldn't really worry about it that much, you know. Like I wouldn't really even think twice about it. But you you start thinking about all the people I know in Hollywood that walk around, that walk the fuck around Hollywood, that live over there. Schrader, that Schrader, Cowenga. You know how many fucking people work at that CNN building and walk up that hill every day to go to that fucking burger joint. And the taco joint and Joe's Pizza. You know how many fucking those people? There's twelve floors there. I can't imagine. Do Do you guys get dark a lot? Like when you just because you guys are so you're comedians. You everyone would think you're funny and happy going. Whenever like if I'm driving and I whenever I, I've talk, talked about this, but the the ramps from highway to highway, I always think those are gonna fall on me, or I'm gonna when I'm driving over them, they're gonna fall. I just go. I go dark immediately. I think the worst thing is going to happen if someone doesn't call me back. I, I they're used, dead. I used to think like that. Oh yeah. And it's... I've been training my mind to like not do that. To 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 sort of like not let my fears control me because I've let my fears control me since I was a kid, and now I've made a big shift mentally. That's the cool. That star hitting you yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fucking hitting. I can Wait, tell. Wait, are you serious? How much does this have? Those are the 200 milligram ones. What, which ones did you give me? These ones right here. Let me see the label because... 125. I asked you how much, how much, how how many milligrams they are, and I swear you said no, 25. No, 125. 125? Yeah. Is that a lot? It uh, depends what you call a lot. I think that's a lot. I think 10 is a lot for me. Depends what you call well, a we, lot. Well, we took like 2,000. We took like 2,000, but we're... <laughs> We're in, we're in training, you know what I'm saying? Jesus Christ. We're taking it to a different level. When you start talking about fears and shit, I can tell that star's hitting you. You're getting all fucking <laughs> Fu Manchu on me and shit. <laughs> it's Ku Manchu. You're all fucking fortune cookied out and it's, shit. It's Ku Manchu. Uh, but, yeah. No, because sometimes your fears can come to life in your real life. Oh, fuck, they always do. 
They do, I met right? Lee. Don't that they was show one of up? my biggest fears. <laughs> I mean, a little Jew How, fuck. How's your like eye? That. I remember you were like. Oh, the last time he got you caught were in like a jacuzzi. You fingering your butthole and rubbing your eye at yeah, the same time? Yeah, he's disgusting. Are you okay? Are your eyes okay? He got eyes that okay? disease up at the fucking. That was his last day. No, no, ask was, him about that his was, last that day. Was my, that was my first impression. No, of no, no. That was, she no. was there the last time I was at the South Point. I don't. I don't know if you were there the Maybe first I time. Maybe should scoot over. I don't want to ha- get what you have. No, I don't have anything anymore. Then the second time, you I'm went sure to the you still Airbnb. carry the virus. <sighs> Poor fucking Lee. There's something. I never had any sort of skin issues. I, I like. Until I, I like when you huff and puff. Well, that's because he gets me all worked up. He tells me I'm not going through training, and I have. I take edibles now. Someone emailed me like, "You essentially have a heroin habit. Take a break. Take a break." But I was. I take it, and he just tells. He he like he likes to mess with me, and he knows he's messing with That's me. That's why you're here. Ah, fucking people, take a break. They don't know nothing. Those are the same people that quit everything in their fucking life. <laughs> we're not quitters here. We go deep into the murky waters. We're not quitters. We're shitters. Ooh. Absolutely. So, how are you doing, Esther Koo? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really good. I uh, I was talking to someone yesterday, the other day, and he was saying that luckily he doesn't think that the uh the edible doses are going to go down. He thinks you're going to get to keep your medical card in California, which I'm pretty excited for. It's a, uh, I don't know. Who gives Wait, a fuck? What's I'm going on? I'm those fucking things every day. They're supposed to shrink them to 10. Nobody really knows. It got voted in and then, nobody's talking. Then talk- you just got to eat more. I don't get, listen, it doesn't even it's affect It's going to make people no fatter. It doesn't even Because you're going to eat more this just to get to that 2,000 than you can in a concentrated thing. It doesn't even matter to me. Anymore. I wonder. I wonder if like the calls to nine one one call centers have gone up since these edibles have become so readily available. Around here, probably. Right. Probably. I know. Fucking. We've had three people that went <laughs> here that went to the hospital and shit like that. Oh really? Who? <laughs> one of your guests? Yeah. Two of <laughs> our, what? Who? Two of our guests had a boogie, and one of them just got up and walked out <gasps> during the podcast. No way. And he walked around the park barefoot for like two hours. He didn't know where he was. Brody Stevens? No, Brody <laughs> Stevens is legit to quit, Jack. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, Brody Stevens is legit to quit. Ada, Ada got sick. She, Ada Rodriguez? Ada was really cool. Ada's dynamite. I've known Ada for years, and we were sitting talking, and I let the stars out just the way they are there. And during the conversation, she just reached out, <gasps> stuck a hand, in and took one. And 30, 40 minutes later, dog, I just saw a fucking change. You know? Oh, my God. It's really weird. Sometimes people come on the show, and they either stop. And I'm sitting right here next to them, and I could see the star grip them. Like, Esther cool. I could see, like, they ate the star, and they've done edibles before and stuff like that. Yeah. It was like, I think because of the light and the way we are and the way the light hits you. <laughs> Because the way you ever eat an edible and go on stage, yeah, it's a different animal. Every, every time I open for you, once the adrenaline gets cooking and <laughs> shit, and it's a fun thing to do. Look at Paul Lee; he's going through changes right now. I'm like, just thinking about all the time I went through changes. Yeah. Oh my god! So, uh, she ate it, and I could tell. Like a half hour, forty minutes, I could tell her demeanor. She was fine when she left, but once you get in that car and you start feeling your heartbeat by yourself, you're like, oh fuck. I gotta go wow. to the hospital, you know. So, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people aren't prepared for them. You smoke a ton of weed. You live in Miami. You used to eat ecstasy. I rely shit. on weed to exist. Yeah. So yeah, this ain't gonna do nothing to you. It's the, Maybe I should eat some more. No, 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 no. Oh. No. If, <laughs> if, you, if, if 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 in an hour you're like Joey, you're an asshole. Okay. Yeah. Let's then test you me. Eat let's test half. me in an I mean, hour. You weigh a hundred pounds. That's Good idea. Cool with a rock in your pocket. Yeah. So, you know, I didn't mean to uh, fakely dose you. <laughs> you know. No, you're, you're no, ahead no. anyway. I thought no, you were I'm eat, good. I thought you were good for like 125 because I know you're a professional. You know, you do Doug's show, you smoke with them, so I thought you were yeah, a professional. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I am. I I'm just, I'm been. not, I don't do edibles so often. How is the weed scene in Miami? Is there edibles It's so more now? expensive than here. It's so cheap out here. Really? Oh, my God, you guys are so lucky. Because they bring it from here down there and they charge you. Yeah. Or they bring Canadian weed down there and they tell you it's from Cali. And you got that going on too. And I a almost got profit arrested margin. on a plane. You know, you ever smoke in the bathroom plane? Yeah. You do. Once. You have. Once, two, or three oh, times. What happened? Virgin caught me. The oh, buzzer yeah? went off, but they couldn't smell it, so they didn't do nothing. Was it a vape? Yeah. Yeah, same thing. They smelt it. No, they couldn't smell it, so 
I was like, I don't know what happened. And they were like, oh, I'm sorry. They apologized to me. <laughs> and then would they say anything to you at the end of the flight? No, nothing. No cop waiting for you? Nothing. Did you feel like they were watching you after you got caught? Because I felt even. they were watching me. Oh. I broke my pen in half and gave it to my wife to hold. And, and then I go, give it back to me. I put it in my bag in the sleep apnea machine. I threw mine in the in the garbage can in the plane bathroom. And I like left and went to my seat. Then when I realized they didn't suspect me of anything, I just went back and grabbed it. Yeah, they that that yeah. that vapor makes. I thought somebody told me it didn't. I found out the hard way when they're banging on the door, and I had like earphones on, <gasps> so I had music on. I'm fucking stoned to the gills. I'm peeing. I'm peeing everywhere. I'm <laughs> fucked up. I take my vapor pen out, and next thing you know, I hear boom, 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 boom. What are you smoking in there? Open the door. They open it. Like, what happened? And they're like, I don't know. I go, you know what? The plane ship. I bumped into this thing over here. Is that what it is? And like, no, 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 okay, no problem. But that's how they nail you when you land. That's yeah. when they say something to you. They hit you with a by the way. Like, I've been stopped when I landed a couple times. Cops have come up to me and said, uh, we got a problem. But. That's racial profiling. No, 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 no. I've gotten into beefs on planes. Oh, okay. So <laughs> there's no racial profiling. <laughs> Nobody racially profiles me. They don't even know what the fuck I am. They look at me, they think I'm Italian, they look at the ID Diaz, they go, we don't even want to know. Go ahead, enjoy your day. You got weapons? No. You got drugs? No. Yeah, yeah, go. Yeah. We don't want to know. Dude, you could be in the witness relocation. They think I'm in the witness relocation plan. I don't know how many people that I've looked at. Witness the, protection program? Yeah. People think I'm in the witness protection. Why? Because I look Italian with a Spanish fucking name. Not just like. So you look suspicious? No, 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 no. There's no suspicious here. <laughs> they just think that I'm in, like I had a guy tell me one time, "Guy, you're in the witness relocation plan at a comedy hotel." Like next time somebody sits to next to me on the plane and asks me what I do, I'm gonna say I'm in the witness protection program. And they go, "Why would I can't go, Why tell would you. you say that?" And he goes, "Because your name is Jose Diaz, but you look like the guy from The Sopranos." That's you do, crazy. You That's do look. You that. do look Italian. So. Like a lot you of play times, Italians who, in movies, who, who right? The fuck no. Yeah, I don't play Spanish roles at all. Never. Never. Well, I don't think you look Italian. I think it's because of your voice. When Shut did up, the, Lee. He looks Italian. When did that start, though? Your your. Well, I guess it's it's not even Italian. It's just like New York, and New Jersey. Yeah. That's interesting. You'd be surprised how many people have said to me, and, and especially when I've traveled to smaller towns like uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. You know why? Because that's where they put those people oh in a college town they put them any they put them everywhere they put them right listen a college town would be fun how fucking crazy is this because college kids are so self-involved they would never look at a wall of at a post office and be like that guy looks like him how about the feds put a friend of mine that the cubans were looking for in fort lauderdale and they lived peacefully for the rest of their life the Cubans are right in Miami that were looking for them. And the feds put these people in Fort Lauderdale in high school, the whole fucking thing. Wow. All right. Fort Lauderdale's not that far. No, because they put them right there in your backyard. <gasps> You're looking somewhere else, and they're fucking, you know, inside. They're that was a very rare case. 20 minutes away. Like Henry Hill, I don't know where the fuck they took him at first. He went to ne Tennessee, but you stick out like a sore thumb in those places. Yeah. You stick out, so they have to you put gotta, you. You got to shuffle it. They have to put you somewhere where you could mix in. Where, where you would never suspect them to never, be. Never, never. When you least expect it. That, that's a weird uh, thing to have, just because you've you've gone on the run before, but to have someone tell you that you have to go, and that you can't talk to anybody. What do you mean the witness relocation? Yeah, or, or just I mean being on the run. I mean because you, you you can talk about that because you can't you can't call okay. anybody. I had to go to karate this morning with my daughter. She got a belt promotion. And one of the other kids in the class is a Cuban kid. He's Cuban and something else. Like Iranian or something like that. Real cute kid. The mother's Cuban. The father's whatever. But he's an FBI agent. So we got into a conversation today. Into a mild conversation. Just about generalities, where I was from, who I grew up with. And we started talking about the FBI when they first got Sammy the Bull Gravano, 
when they first got Simon Bogomano, the FBI wanted John Gotti so fucking bad. Stop fidgeting, Lee. The FBI wanted John Gotti so fucking bad. You ready for this one? Mm-hmm. They made Sammy the Bull's loan shark collection. The FBI collected his loan shark payments. Before Sammy the Bull fully went into the witness relocation plan, he was making 60000 a month in loan shark payments. And he refused to go in until all that debt was collected. He had like $1.5 million on the street or something still. And he made the FBI go collect the debts for him. He would call the fucking people up. Were the FBI doing that on the side? Or as their job? As their job. They wanted him so bad. A couple weeks ago, I went down to Tempe, Arizona. And I went for a walk one morning. And I was like, when fucking Sammy the Bull Gravano first left New York, and he lived in Brooklyn. You know the five boroughs. He lived in Brooklyn. He was a captain in Brooklyn or Queens or something like that. No, no, he lived in Staten Island. But he worked out of Brooklyn. And then, you know, when he first flipped on John Gotti, they took him directly somewhere else. But where they settled was Scottsdale, Arizona. And while he was in Scottsdale, he opened up an Italian restaurant. Called the Olive Garden. No, and it was called the best kept secret in Scottsdale. That was the, the wow. jingle on the book of matches and no stuff. No way. It took him years to find. But remember, Sammy didn't give a fuck. Sammy went right out there and started telling people who he was. He opened up a pool cleaning business. They were going to go down there and get him. And then they hired Chicago Police Department. Cops from Chicago to go down there and shoot him. But right before they got down there, he got arrested by the feds for ecstasy. His son was involved in an ecstasy ring. Since he had knowledge in the whole thing, he got arrested. Okay. They put him in jail in Scottsdale. All right. But there's this fucking dude in jail in Newark, New Jersey, who's doing these documentaries. And he's telling all these fucking stories and shit about the people he killed. I think the first two documentaries were real. I think after that, he just started claiming everybody. Like, he, he would claim fucking anybody, but it doesn't matter. One of his documentaries, the last one, he spoke about killing a cop in Jersey. And they said to him, who gave you the order? And he goes, the Gambinos. When they interviewed Sammy the Bull Gavano, when he turned himself in, you have to tell him everything. Everything. I don't give a fuck if you ran over a cat. You better fucking tell him because it can't come back to haunt him. So during his interviews, they kept asking him, we'll give you leniency, but you better not have killed the cop. The order for that guy to kill that cop came from Sammy the Bull Gravano. The feds right away went to Scottsdale, took him out of there, charged him in Jersey, and put him in Colorado and Tomahawk. He's under the fucking jail. He's in a jail in Tomahawk that's underground. They built it in Colorado for the worst people. That's where the terrorists are. That's where Carlos Ladera is. Because he lied. Because he lied. Because he embarrassed the feds. Because he told he, he was the Christ. see he was the first one that really went in there. So he had his way. Not only that, but he conned them. He told them he was never involved in drugs. And then people started turning themselves in, and they all had stories. My partner was Sammy. You're lying. Sammy was not involved in drugs. Gone. All these people got thrown out of the program because Sammy had lied. He said he wasn't involved in drugs. But these people, all when they went in, they said, I sold fucking ships full of quaaludes with Sammy. What the fuck are you talking about? So... They got pissed at him for that. They still have him under the fucking prison. I mean, but if you're getting caught by the feds, you're gonna lie. 
Right? Not if you turn yourself in and cut a deal. Well, who's going to turn themselves in? Sammy did. Would you? At that situation, Sammy the Bull Gravano, they played tapes and the feds doctored the tapes. And they made Sammy look like a killer. So they were going to throw Jesus. John Gotti in jail for 50,000 years. But they were going to throw Sammy in jail in there with him too. Listen, all this audio evidence right this garbage you can't trust it it's anymore garbage. nowadays any a teenager can just edit audio on their computer to make it look like sound like how crazy is that that it's crazy good, that doesn't hold up in court when anymore you got a great attorney he actually hires f x fbi people to re-examine tapes that the fbi examined for for evidence and they find all the fucking inequalities in the tape once you throw that tape in, if there's a big money attorney, he's going to call for an investigator. And he's going to hire an ex-FBI sound guy. And he's going to come up with, it's a fucking scam. It's a scam. In other words, it, it makes you spend more money on your defense. So now I could attack you from a different way. So it's a lot of different ways. With, you know, if Scientology takes you to court, they string you up in litigation. Litigation means you're spending money. They got all the money to keep you tangled up. They'll just keep sending their attorney 5000 a fucking day. How long can you do 5000 a day for? Jeez. Two weeks and you're tapping on. <laughs> Damn. You know, the witness relocation program, I read a book years ago named Witsack. 20 years ago, when the Miami Improv was on the third floor, mm -hmm. towards the back there was a Borders Books. And as soon as I would go pick up the key to the condo, I would go in that thing and buy two or three books. It was my fucking addiction number two to cocaine. Awesome. I hate going to the library. I hate buying books that have been read already. I don't <laughs> like buying fresh books. I don't want your greasy <laughs> fucking disgusting fingers on my fucking book. Or the pages are just more brittle at the yeah. library. So I read this book, Witsack, and it had stories of ten different people. They didn't even give their real names, but how... They had really succeeded, man. They had really fucking succeeded. Like, you know, there's some people who go into the witness relocation plan. I, if you look up the statistics for what the uh, failure rate is, it'll blow your mind. you got to assume the feds are lying about that, too. I guarantee it's 50-50. Because you can't take the animal out of the person. That's the cool when those people go to that small village... Didn't they take that rat out of that guy's <coughs> asshole on Jackass? I don't know nothing about that. I don't watch that shit. I'm talking <laughs> about realities of life here. I don't know about Jackass or rats. Do you ever see the movie My Blue Heaven? No. Do you ever see it? No. No. You, why would you? you why, why does the Astor get in trouble? Because Esther is Esther. You're, you're from Boston. <laughs> so you're shot now. <laughs> so what should, what should I look up for witness relocation? Failure statistics for a WITSEC program. And see what the fucking failure rate is. I guarantee it would blow your mind. And they're going to dope it up. But I read like 11 different stories, as to the point is, of people who had been... Uh, what is that? When I uh, say that you murdered somebody... Falsely to bank accused? Fraud, yeah, for, no, 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 no. Nobody gets falsely fucking accused here. <laughs> I'm talking about when you murder somebody. Right. But I murdered six bitches. So you, you know, go, I was there when he murdered Lee. Plea agreement? Plea agreement. No, no, no. What Don't is confuse that called? me more. Whatever. Alimony? Called, <laughs> so, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about now because both of these got to fucking throw me off like stereos and shit. You know I'm high. You know, I'm barely holding on here to fucking memory and shit like that. And you got to throw something out like my wife to throw the whole fucking battlefield off. <laughs> Sometimes I'm sitting there. I'm ready to leave the fucking house. I got something in my hand and she'll say something. I get in the car. I'm halfway around the corner because she said something to me on the way out. I forgot the whole fucking kit and caboodle. I'm getting old. That's the cool. So the 11 people that went to these places, bro, they started beautiful lives. Wow. Beautiful lives. Like, they looked at each other and said, that's it. If I do this... Uh-huh. We had a guy in here. We had a guy in here that came in here one time and did the church. He lived on Laurel King, and I made I did one of his movies. He was the first guy to roll on John Gotti for heroin. And do you want me to tell you what his reasoning was to get out? What? That he had two kids that were going to be 
big time football players. Like they were like sophomores and they had already been hit up from college. And they let him out, right? So no, no, no. He took his kids. He went to Texas. They became all state football players and they went to the University of Colorado under different names. Wow. I found it. They're saying, so what they're saying is. They couldn't wear their own names on their jerseys? No, you had to wear a different name. They're saying that 17% of people have recidivism. Is that what you're trying to find out? Is that because that's kind of a failure, right? If you commit commit a crime while on uh, wit tech, it's seventeen percent compared to forty one percent of parolees. So it's less than parolees, but they're saying that ninety five percent of the people in the program are criminals. So it's no, they're fucking ice cream people. Yeah, they're fucking criminals. I don't know. I thought like I thought more of them were going to be like the uh, the kind of witnesses where like I witness something. And I, they're gonna kill me just because I'm a witness. Oh, I see what you're saying. I, I figured it was more than five percent of that. Who know? But it's uh, I can't believe you would know multiple people who have been put in that program. God damn, to man. Just, to just be thrown like like I, I can't imagine someone coming to my house one day and being like, "You have to move your entire life." That's so sad. <clears throat> I tell you all the time, people get involved with people they know shit about, and all of a sudden you're putting a little change in your pocket. You're living like you've never lived before, and you get blinded by this ether. It happens every day in America. It happens every day everywhere. And the next thing you know, you go on vacations, you're buying nice cars, your wife is happy. She's letting you put it up her ass for the first time in 15 years. <laughs> is that I'm how s- long it took? No, no, no. I'm just fucking Mrs. saying Diaz. that. No, no, no. I'm just saying that this is what everybody's happy. Everybody's sucking this ether. You're buying your wife diamonds, you know, and all of a sudden, the shit gets tight, and all of a sudden they come to your house. You got a kid that's five. You got a kid that's seven. You've been hanging out with criminals. Oh. They're professionals. You're an amateur. You did paperwork. You moved a couple numbers. Guess what? Those numbers are going to get you and your wife 40 fucking years. And your kids are going to have to live with your mother in fucking Chicago when she's an alcoholic and your Jesus. dad bites his toenails. So now what the fuck do you do? You got yourself in a bad jam. What do you do, Esther Koo? You know these people. You know where they have more money hidden. You know where the drugs are. You call the feds and they put you in Portland, Oregon. And you live your life under Mr. and Mrs. fucking Joe Smith. And your kids have to change their names. Their school records get expunged, you know. Everything is gone. Everything. So they walk in with kids... I, not everything is gone. There's something that they do. That's got to be weird. The feds walk Being in a kid, being told. Can you imagine? You can't go by Joey anymore. Can you imagine? Your new name is... It's... Lee. It's a... Listen, man. Nothing is free. I mean, they don't go to jail per se, but you go to jail. You go to your own personal prison because you can't live the way you did. You can't go to the places that they used to do. You can never go home. You can never go home. You can never contact your family, contact your friends from those years. You can't do nothing. And maybe maybe this is just in movies, but... That is torture. But listen to me. They even have percentages for people who make calls. Oh, did they? Oh, okay. They even had a broken... In this book, they even had a broken down, like, the percentages. Like, it was a book about 10 different, 11 different people, but they also had a couple chapters in there about what else happens to you in there. How you get deprogrammed, they put you in a hotel for a little while, and then the kids get to know the marshals, and, you know, it's, it's fucking weird. You live with 15 people for the next six months, and then they move you, you go to court, they move you, and then you have to fly back for the trials to to testify Jesus and they probably put you in a shithole they probably aren't putting you in like some nice ass house well here's the deal right? here's where the knock came in and if you look even closer into it okay and the knock comes in they, in this book they had it broken down because it even happens where people go sour after 18 months you know why because you sign a contract and for the first year the feds pay you and they pay you fucking tremendously. I'm talking about if Esther Cool was working in a real estate office, making eighty grand, she get her hunt. You get your attorney to go negotiate one twenty five, and Lee, you can make one fifty. So for a year, you're living high on the hog in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. And all of a sudden, one day they go, it's over. 
and here you are, 36 years old, no fucking, you can't use your name. You, where's your college degree? You just have to invent your way. You have to reinvent yourself. How many fucking people know how to reinvent themselves? Three out of ten? I know somebody who's trying to reinvent themselves. Oh, I know everybody who's reinventing themselves. <laughs> right? Every you day. See go it, to Hollywood you see Boulevard go and to, sign Go up. to Twitter. But not reinvent yourself that way. You have to remove your past life. Remove what's going to get you fucked up. You know, because, all right, so you never drank before. Guess what? You miss your mother. You miss your dog. You miss your father. You're going to start drinking. That's really sad. No, it's a fucking, it's a fucking, it's, what's the, it's the best of two evils. It's both of them are fucking evil. <clears throat> then I read the Henry Hill book, the one his daughter wrote. His daughter wrote a book, and you have to read this craziness. They lived in ten different fucking places. The last one being Seattle when he married another woman under a different, he told. So he married his wife under Henry Hill, but he married the mistress under the fucking new name, and he moved her into the house. Well, oh my God. <laughs> you got to read this shit. She hates her father, says that half the movie's bullshit, that she did the research. He was fucking in heroin. Joey, the you need a book club. What do you mean? You need a book club. Tell people what to read. Yeah, tell people what to read. Recommend a book to them. Well, my ta you know, like my wife reads fucked up shit. <laughs> Half the shit she reads, and then she reads on the fucking computer, oh and they touch a screen and oh, do I that. I hate that. I, I hate need, all I that shit. I need to read real books. I'm an old man. I want to read the. I want to smell those papers. Felipe gave me a great I book. I want to see how physically, like, how fast I'm reading it. When Felipe Where won my last, bookmark when is. Felipe won last comic standing. Felipe gave me a book called Esparza. Yeah, the something crew. It was about heroin when the Jews were selling heroin in the Bronx with the Italians. It was just Jews and Italians and a few Chinese. <clears throat> and I tried to get the book, it was $250. And the only place that had it was a big library in LA, so I had to go down there and read it. And then Felipe found it and gave it the, the, the Pleasant Avenue Connection. That's the name of the motherfucking book. Pleasant Avenue Connection. Is that it? Yep. Damn. Felipe. The Pleasant Avenue Connection. Oh, shit. Boom. That's a good book. Right now, Bob Lolingus gave me a book <coughs> that I'm salivating. I'm salivating. But it's got to be, it's going to be a week to read this book. The book is maybe five fucking inches of book. It's Led Ze it's Jimmy Page's Three Different Lives, the guitarist from Led Zeppelin. Wow. Just looking awesome. at it, just looking at the book gives you anxiety for so many different ways. It gives me anxiety that it's not like the old days where I could just crawl into a fucking couch roll up five joints, get a half gallon of orange juice, some Adam cheese, some crackers like a motherfucker, put the TV on but turn the Valium off and just start reading. Smoke a fucking joint, read fucking six chapters, get up, stretch, drink some orange juice, eat a piece of cheese, smoke another half a dude. And, and you're go. just sinking into Led Zeppelin's <laughs> world. Just for you're six. Just like you're, you're him you, while reading it. I love reading in that level. Now let me let me lie to you even more. Like I used to read and shit like that, and I enjoyed it. I don't enjoy reading when somebody gave me a fucking assignment. Yeah, it's terrible. Like my seventh grade teacher, the one who failed me, Mister Kingwell. That motherfucker used to make you read a book a month, and it was an oral book report. So he would just read chapters and ask you fucking stupid questions. I was never good with comprehension. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I never claimed to be fucking smart. I can read the chapter three times. I don't know what the fuck I read. That's the other thing. If I really get into a book, I gotta read it twice, because I don't know what the fuck I read. So while I'm reading it, I gotta read it again. I gotta smoke a dude. You read it again? The whole thing? Like, I'll read or, it. Or do you just I'll read the page, chapter twice. Oh, page by page. Page by page. Okay. But, you know, so from that I learned 
I like to read when I look at a book and go, like that book right there, the Hollywood Henderson book, that's a day and a half for me. That's a, that's, I start at 11 and I go till 4, and then I get up at 8, take a shower, wash my monkey, eat breakfast, and go again from 10 to about 1.30. Amazing. That's how fast I can read those. But I just disappear. Like I don't want the phone to ring. Like when you're reading the book and the phone rings and it ain't worth the phone call, like somebody's calling you to say hello. Oh, don't you like, hate you that? You filthy motherfucker. <laughs> I'm reading the best book in the world. You want to call me and bother me. Hi, how are you? What are you doing? Have you heard this new album? Listen, <laughs> do me a favor. Have you considered shooting yourself? You know, come fucking bother me. I'm deep, deep, deep in this fucking book. <laughs> and they're just a lonely fuck just hanging out by themselves. They have no significant other and they just want to bug you. But speaking of being lonely, that's where I really got into reading in prison. Oh, yeah. That's how I kept myself jammed up a few hours here, a few hours there. I can't tell you how many books. That's why I learned to read. George Perez said, told me that <coughs> in jail it's just real quiet. Because I was like, is there anything you miss about jail? And he's like, yeah. When people leave jail, everybody's talking all the time. Like, in jail, you guys all have your own private space and everybody knows. It's like, don't I, bother I would anybody. go to the library. I would just sit in the library for four fucking hours, read the paper, put a notepad down, make notes. Yeah, the fucking. library part of a jail looks like the outside world because it, it's a library. It's a library. It doesn't feel like a jail probably. But it, it wasn't were there, fucking the library of the Americas. Was, were you there, were there, there bars? Books. Were there bars in front of the library door? No, 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 no. no so no, you no. feel you free. You just walked in. You just walk in, sign your name, grab a book, grab a newspaper. You could check out a book. You know, you could check out a book to yourself, bring it back in three days, keep revolving. You know, you could order books. Like, if they don't have the book, you could order it from a different prison. Like, they have a book of the month club. I, I grew shit. up in the library. My mom, Did you? My mom used it as a daycare. Fucking immigrants, right? She would That's just. That's brilliant. She, <laughs> you're going to start That's doing brilliant. that. No, I can't do but that shit. She would just drop us all off at the library, and we'd be there for hours. She'd go grocery shopping, she'd go do all her errands. Don't get me wrong, I've tried to be a, a je ne sais quoi type of dude. <laughs> and I've put on my little hat with a feather and I've gone to the library with a cafe au lait. Raise your pinky in the I air. Can't, I can't do it. Yeah. I like reading with the sun hitting you. Well, plus the library is just filled with a bunch of people using the Wi-Fi. Using the yeah, computers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that. It's turned into the a semi-YMCA. You live in L.A. You pay all this money. You sacrifice so much to be away from your family. Let me tell you something. <laughs> You grab your notebook and a pencil, and you go get a fucking iced coffee. You smoke a joint. You get some nicotine gum, and you face the sun with an umbrella over you in L.A. To figure, you got four hours of writing. You're out there getting vitamin D. Why'd you come out of here if you're not gonna absorb this fucking sun? You know how much energy the sun fucking gives you when you need to write. Do you have any fucking idea when you're reading? How that warmth gets you even more fired up when you're reading a book and you're drinking a nice cold fucking water or something. Or when the sun comes That's why I never liked the library. Window? Yeah, I don't like the library it's too dark. much. It's too dark for Uncle Joey. It's too fucking dark for me. I like to read in the sun, you know, a little sun hitting in you. In the park with the grass. And you can pull some grass out. Nice, nice. Lay the down home. lay down on your jacket. Very nice. Yeah. There's homeless people in the park. I don't know what you're talking about. The park. Well, please leave. No, 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 I'm, talking, I'm, talk, I'm homeless, talking about Central Park. There's homeless people in Central Park. How many, not, how many no, homeless people really. bother you at the park? What park are but you talking You guys, about? L.A. has the best looking homeless people. They're so good looking. I saw a super hot homeless guy today. So last week, for the first time <laughs> ever, I went down to the flower district down there. <laughs> I saw things down there I haven't seen in 40 fucking years. That's horror down there. Where? Where I went last week, with, it's a whole street. Is that like Skid Row? Tents. Oh, yeah. no. Tents, fucking people out there yelling naked. People running around the street with blankets on like a apocalypse. You know what everybody's talking about? This a zombie apocalypse. I swear to God, when I pulled into that place, I got out of my car and I looked. And the first thing I saw was a guy, naked, dirty feet, boxer shorts with a blanket, walking around with his hair all fucked up with a cup looking for donations. 
I went over, I gave him two fucking singles. I said, get some sneakers. <laughs> Go do something. You know what I'm saying? You're walking around here with a blanket for fucking bare feet. Your feet are uglier than mine. What the fuck? <laughs> Not two minutes, I saw another dude walking with a blanket. It was nine in the fucking morning. How cold can it be? These people walking around with blankets, their hair's all fucked up, looking for food, looking. I got two egg sandwiches. I gave and then one you give them food, and they are like, what is it? And they're, and then you tell them it's... No, no, no. Listen, I bought two egg sandwiches. <laughs> the Korean dude cut them in half, and there was two... Ra- Why'd you point at me? I just said the Korean dude cut them in half like this. I didn't point at nobody. I don't point at nobody. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what denomination you are. I don't want no problems with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, the Yakuza's kicking no, down my I'm door. I'm just saying you're correct, but go ahead. Are you Korean? Yep. Oh, that's why. You know I can tell you're Korean? How? You have a certain beauty to you. Koreans are the really hottest of all the Asian girls, I think. I know, but if I said I was Japanese, you would be like, Japanese women no, are no, just no, no, the no, hottest. No, I used to date a Korean girl. You said that to all the Asian women. Date, Depending on what Asian, because guys do that. Japanese <laughs> chicks are in the medium, but they're fucked up in their head somewhere. They're still, they, you oh know, my God. they're getting bombed. Who the fuck knows what's going on with them? Then Chinese chicks are too smart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like Chinese chicks are just too yeah, smart. They don't even talk to. Dude that like, Zuck- Zuckerberg's wife is Chinese, the, and she's the, a doctor. One of the girls at the daycare is so Chinese. She, she talks with that. Mm. <laughs> when you talk to she old makes, school she Chinese, she makes sound people, effects. Yes, she talks with. The, mm. Yes, we went to Chinatown last week. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I, <do. laughs> I know. She's very sweet. This lady, I was trying to explain. Uh, but ethnic people and their sound Ali effects. Ali Wong thought she wasn't buying it. <laughs> she wasn't like, buying Ali Wong. She was too fucking Chinese. She's still fucking pissed about something. <laughs> Dude, I, I can, you know, you have to be able to make sound effects of, like to communicate with Koreans. Like, if I go to a Korean restaurant, they don't like it if I don't make those sound effects. What kind of sound effects do you make? Just like, mmm, okay. Ajuma. I have a question. Aigo. You know, like to to do like the accent a little bit, because they I feel like they give me bad service if I don't do that, because then they'll think I'm Chinese or Japanese. So I have to show them that I'm Korean, even if I order in English. You know what I mean? Are there really? Uh, well, have you tried the menus for like only Korean people in Korean restaurants, or only like have no, you tried that? I can't because I can't read Korean. Oh, that's fucked up. I know. Now, how long have you been in Miami for? For a couple years. Just a couple years? Yeah. I'll tell you it was a witness relocation guy. And you're going to put this together. The guy that owned Liquid. Did you ever hear that club Liquid in Miami? No. A nightclub? Yeah, late 90s, early 2000s. It was a club Liquid. Uh-huh. And Monday nights was Big Black Pussycat. All right, they would give you condom rings at the door and shit like that. Cock rings and shit. It was crazy. I mean, I used to work Miami Coconut Grove, and they would say that Mondays you couldn't get flights from New York to Miami. It was impossible. Everybody was going to Miami, the fat black pussycat. Really? Yeah, lines, whatever, you know. Wow. And I guess the owner from there, he was dating Madonna for a while. He dated Jennifer Lopez. He was slinging some dick this Damn. Dude. But he was down there because he had killed somebody in Brooklyn when he was younger. Madonna fucked a murderer? Oh yeah, so he went to Miami. <laughs> that was the allure then. He owned the club. Oh, did they know? That was did they know it. he was a murderer? Well, when somebody has a gun, you know, when you gr- hug somebody and you can feel a gun, you know, these girls they don't know what he is. So he built up his reputation. He started smacking people. He turned it into New York City down there. He brought his buddies down there, and then his he he got rich. He got fucking filthy rich. Filthy rich. He was opening up another club. Then the people in, the, in New York found out that he got rich. And those barracudas shot down to Miami to get their fucking paper. And somewhere along the line, he turned a witness relocated guy against the Columbos. But let me flash to you. You ready for this? Four years ago, five years ago, he had a restaurant on Melrose. Just like that. I thought you were supposed to like keep a low profile. Some people go in and go, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. Let them kill me. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. So he opened up two restaurants. Read it. His name is Christian. What Let's is, see what comes what's up. The, what's the name of his restaurant? We're going to find out right now. 
There's nothing suspicious going on here, restaurant. I don't know. Christian Pacello. P A C I E L L O. Try that. That's all I know. Wow. I don't even know what his witness relocation name is. I don't really know what it says on that. Yeah, uh, let's see here. A uh, former, was he born in like 70s, do you think? Pacciello. Yeah. Okay. He's a member of the untouchable car theft ring and a government informant convicted of murder. And he became a prominent nightclub owner in South Miami. God damn it. What the fuck do you think he's dealing with? Some novice? Jesus Yeah, he was born in Bro- he was born in Brooklyn under a different last name. And yeah, he was on the he was in the mob. And a three hundred thousand dollar bank robbery. Fuck. Now, did he have a restaurant that say the name of the restaurant and then it said it went under? It was always very interesting to me. Okay, he opened one in Miami called Bianca in the Delano Hotel. The Delano. Delano, sorry. Oh, damn. He opened the Delano? He opened it's called Bianca in the, the Delano. Bianca that in the is Delano. There are a restaurant in the Delano. He didn't open up the fucking Delano. <laughs> <laughs> the Delano was there when Tony Montana got the fucking Miami. <laughs> because that's the cool shit. You better eat the other half of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, where'd I put it? I don't know, but we got tons of them. <laughs> I thought it, he opened the Delano. If you open it, if you fucking lose it, we got more. I lost. What else? I lost the half of my star. The other half. Okay, which one should I have? Three seventy-five. No, 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 take the little one. The three seventy-five. This one. is little, right? Yeah, the red. They gotta be yeah, red, yeah, yeah. not purple. Oh red. my god! Yeah, he also dated Sofia Vergara, Naomi Campbell, Daisy Fuentes. Jesus Christ! He slung big dick. In that Miami. means they all have the same STD. Probably. You know? Yeah, he was dating Sofia Vergara. That's who he was dating. Don't you think all these celebrities, they must be rabid with STD? They must be like... Fucking crazy shit, man. Do you think, like, is there like a level that we just don't get to see? I don't know if it's celebrity. I don't know if it's political. But maybe it's just like for people with that much money. Like, how was Madonna fucking a nightclub owner in Miami who's on Witness Relook? It just... That, that whole world... I don't think we know anything Well, this about was it. before he went into witness relocation plan. He opens up this club, bro. Okay? He owns the hottest club on South Beach. Everybody's going in there. Puffy Combs. Everybody's going every night of the week. Somebody else is in fucking Miami shooting a video, and they're told to go to Liquid. And they go to Liquid, and it becomes the hottest club. Girls come in. Everybody's kissing on them and shit. Who was he dating? Yeah, Sofia Vergara, Madonna... Uh, Jennifer Lopez. I yeah. mean, he had a little flinch with all of them. Nikki Taylor, Naomi Campbell, Daisy Fuentes. You know what? Once you get away with murder, you can just conquer the nightclub so world. he created this aura around him. He's a gangster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And again, some people don't know what they're getting involved with until you get a knock on the door at 6 in the morning. Your parents are over there. And it's the FBI wanting to talk to you about your former boyfriend. If he had a gun, what characteristics did he have? And you're like, I knew he was a gangster. That's why I sucked his dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do you think? I knew it. I loved it. <laughs> That's until, the ultimate uh, bad boy. Yeah, until yeah. He, he has like nine girlfriends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I didn't want to be one of his bitches. <laughs> so, so I found out my gangster boyfriend yeah. is going out with 20 other girls and they all look like that's me. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Do you think I should break up with him? Yeah, that's one of the weirdest scenes in, uh, is it Goodfellas? <sighs> Where like, it's amazing how quickly the the wife goes from like getting money to shop and giving a blowjob, in like the kitchen, to mad about the mad about the mistress and all. But like, it's quick how quickly stuff can turn from everyone's on board into yeah. And that must be fucked up about being on witness relocation. What if your wife gets pissed off and suddenly wants to go back? And tell everybody. And that's what happened to Sammy. The government the, wants my husband to be in the witness protection program. When Sammy the Bull first went into the rat program, <laughs> <laughs> his wife said, fuck you. Oh, no. His wife said, fuck you. I don't want no part of you. The neighborhood don't want no part of you. You're a fucking piece of shit. Once he got convicted, he went to Arizona. She flew down and, yeah, I'm your fucking husband. <coughs> Regardless of what happened, you got to take me in the good times and the bad times. It's part of the fucking <laughs> speech you give, correct or no? Yep. Right, something like that, right? So, in good and bad, I fucked up, 
But in the meantime, when I was fucking up, you were living like a doctor. You were smoking cigarettes and drinking fucking Malay Pignan and <coughs> going to France. You know, Sammy the Bull made a ton of fucking money. When I'm telling you tons of money, I'm talking about millions of fucking dollars as a gangster. That's tough to do. That can never be done. Like he was selling drugs. He had construction companies. He had a he had a piece of the union. You know, I mean, he was a loan shark. He was in charge of gambling. That guy made a lot of fucking money, man. He bought a lottery ticket. Like you know, like when you win the lottery for one point four million, and you could do the buyout for eight hundred thousand. He bought the lottery ticket, so he could cash it in and claim it on his taxes. <gasps> that is brilliant. Shit like that. That's that street Brilliant. shit. That's crazy. Oh my god! Somebody I love hit the that. lottery three times. Oh, the dude from Boston. That dude hit the lottery like eight times. Why the Bolger? So wait, what you're saying is someone would win the lottery. All right, you win the lottery. Buy it from. Oh my god! Yeah. He, but besides having to just buy the lottery tickets, he has to win a couple times. Yeah. So. Oh so he god. would buy out the li lottery. Yeah, he's like. No. <laughs> and throw away the other tickets. That's who's buying the lotto tickets. It's fucking crazy. The mob is fueling the lottery industry. It's fucking crazy. And they're all in on it. When I got arrested, I went to... When I got arrested, you have to give a statement. And I kind of conflicted myself. And then I shut my mouth. And they kind of used it against me, but they really couldn't because it didn't say that I was guilty. But I played them. Like, I got arrested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I turned myself in November something, right? Uh-huh. For, for I, what? I, oh, for a bunch of stuff. Kidnapped and aggravated. <laughs> but they got plea bargain. But I played that. Am I being kidnapped right now? No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I, well, why would I kidnap you? I got you on a podcast. Unless there's a fake podcast, I gotta kill Lee. <laughs> I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta blow up the fucking computer, and then I, you know what I'm saying? It'd be too much work. It's yeah, too many no, moving it's parts. too much effort. There's too much DNA. You walked around barefoot. I bleed no, a lot. You don't want to do he that. He bleeds a lot. So when you got arrested, I walked on your back earlier. There's did you really? No, you didn't. There's no, you footprints didn't. on your t-shirt. No, no. Yeah, remember Lee, dude? These stars are really getting to you, Joey. I know they're getting to you, Estico. You've ever already forgotten half of what we've done today. I know. So Remember we went to get ice cream? No, today? I did not. <laughs> so I played, like, I didn't say a word. Uh -huh. They didn't say nothing to me. Then nobody ever came to me and said, can we talk to you? Well, we want to know who you... Nobody ever said nothing to me. Do you, ever, do you ever have a cop arrest you who's, like, a tiny guy? Oh, they're all tiny. So what did, did how many people does it take to arrest you? Like I just turn around. Why would I want to fight them? They have guns. They got guns. I'm in no mood to go hand to hand. I've never disrespected a police <laughs> officer in my life. Like I've never gotten really into a verbal altercation one time. The two days after 9-11, I got a $450 ticket because my car was over the line at 7-Eleven into the handicap spot. Oh, motherfucker. And I looked at him, and I, bro, 450, I felt 450. Jeez. 450, you feel 450. Oh, God. I looked at that motherfucker, I said, they just blew up the towers and you give me a ticket for five bills for being, like that was the first time I ever said something out of color. I've never had a problem with a cop onto the station, nothing. You come, you talk to me, I try to talk to you like a man, if we can't figure it out there, we take it to the station. So when I turned myself in, nothing, nothing was said to me. Then about mid-January, beginning of February, I got into an argument with my attorney. And I had to go to court and fire him and get a new attorney, which also bought me time, which is what I wanted. I would have fired 10 attorneys. You know what I'm saying? I didn't give a fuck. The state was going to pay for them. And then at the last minute, I was gonna throw. I was gonna throw my own money in and get my own attorney anyway. Do you understand? Me? <laughs> I already had a master fucking plan, Esther Coop. Yes, I love it. So in the meantime, I had already talked to the attorney. I was just trying to save the money. I didn't want to give this guy this much money. At this point, I was gonna try to hold them off for another fucking month. But when I went to court, he couldn't show up that month. It was a Monday morning at ten. And I didn't go up in front of the same judge that prosecuted me. I went in front of, that sentenced me. I went in front of this other judge. 
And he goes, do me a favor. Uh, I want to talk to you about not this case, but about your counsel. Meet me in chambers. Go over behind here. I'll have the sheriff bring you around there. And when I walked behind there, I was in this room, and all of a sudden this door opened up. And the dude I turned myself in with came in the room with two other dudes. And the one dude had like a beard, and the one dude had, was dressed nicely. It was just a regular nerdy dude. They introduced themselves, and they said, listen, man, you're looking at a lot of time here. Uh, the guy you got in trouble with, before he got bailed out, he gave us a bunch of information about you. We want to show you something. Did you believe him? No, 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 no. I played it all. I was young, but I had already been to the grill. Yeah, you knew I what knew, to do. Yeah, I, at this time already, I come in. At this time already, I knew I was going to do time, and I wasn't accepting it too good. But what was I going to do? I did the crime. This is for all the other crimes I've done. Did the correctional officers treat you okay? No, no, no. By this time, it wasn't correctional officers. These guys were... This is before I even got sentenced, says the coup. I'm still walking around the street. I had to go to court to fill a motion out, to file a motion to fire my old attorney. So when I was there in court, the judge says to me, listen, since you fired this other attorney, come around the back and let me give you a list of something of the other court-appointed attorneys. My clerk will give you, my clerk, like a, a little old dude or a chick or something. So when I walk around the back, before the clerk could come in, the cop that I turned myself into came in with two other dudes. And they said, we want to talk to you about something. And I'm like, what's up? And they're like, listen, you're looking at time. But we were looking through our files, and look what we found. They, and they had pictures of the house I lived in, 435 Faraway Road. They had pictures. Faraway Road? That was the name of the place in Snowmass Village. Oh, my God, that's such a great name. They had all these pictures of me at the airport. They were saying that this was going to be federal time. For what I was doing, and all they got to do was get one of the plane tickets. They were just blowing smoke up my ass. And they said that I knew people in Boulder that I could help them with. And I go, listen, I don't know nobody. Who the fuck do I know? You're trying to convince me from stealing coke, right? <laughs> if I know somebody, wouldn't I be stealing fucking coke? And that was it. They said, we'll be in touch with you. They never said nothing to me again. The clerk came out, gave me the piece of paper, and I left. And that was it. I ne they never beat me up. <laughs> it wasn't like the movies where they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you they, have the answer. You know who it was. They almost respect you. Yeah. No, no, no. They didn't respect nobody. They just knew I wasn't saying no. I didn't know nobody. You're not a troublemaker. Listen, if they were going to arrest me in Snowmass Village, they would have arrested me. That's where they fucked up. If they wanted me for something at that time, for drugs at that time, they should have pinched me right there while I was in the fucking courtroom. They didn't. That's the cool. So when they didn't pinch me, that means they had nothing. If they had something, they would have arrested me. Since they didn't have anything, they just had a rat that didn't wear a wire, that they were taking pictures of buying coke from me, supposedly. They didn't really have nothing. They were just assuming. They said I knew people in Jersey. They thought I you'd be taking... dumb enough to fall for that. No, it wasn't that was... Ooh, not, not, not <laughs> I was dumb enough to fall for nothing. <laughs> That was a tremendous fart. It blew backwards, though. I gotta shake my sweatshirt off. I thought that was a medium, medium to small size fart. Uh, oh my god, this is a crazy <laughs> fucking show tonight, Lisa. <laughs> well, you want another star? Sure, why not? What Let's the do fuck? It. It's Wednesday night, February first. Does the hog come out of the hole tomorrow? What's he going to do? Groundhog Day tomorrow. Is it really? Yeah, February 2nd. See, I know. It's Groundhog Day. Who the day. fuck you people think you're dealing with? Joy Bananas? You know, we're f it's February already. You got to order something for your wife. For what? For Valentine's Day. It's coming up. Valentine's Day in my house is every fucking day, all right? <laughs> every day in my house. What Valentine's Day? Every day in my house is Valentine's yeah, Day. Yeah, Valentine's Day coming up. Every fucking day. God damn. I'm very happy about that. It used to not be Valentine's Day every day, but things happen. People get comfortable with each other, and that's it. Everything, <laughs> everything falls into fucking place. Well, right? not, we're we're comfortable now. You, you, now you, that now that you farted, I, I'm just not I'm just not going to hold my farts in from the rest of the podcast. No, 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 no. Yeah. Let, 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 listen, let one of those Koreans zing. He loves all that <laughs> stuff. He'll smell that little fucking dumpling ass until it's all <laughs> over. That little dumpling fart. I used, I used to tell my parents, you can't move your bodies when you fart. Like, in America, people like to keep it a secret who farted. In Korea, they all announce their farts like... 
like oh they do yeah as a sign of like i enjoyed your meal oh please i'm like stop doing that man that's the cool you keep telling me that you're working on a project tell me i gotta go to the bathroom but tell lee and i'll come in mid conversation what tell up me lee? you're working for what up, well lee? i I'm actually up. i actually farted yesterday that's nice no what was that uh, okay well here's the thing you know the microphone does and I had a microphone here, one of those lavaliers, right? Right. And it's attached to the battery pack, but you have it on all day, so you forget that you have it on. Oh. So in the middle, when we took a break from shooting, I went to the bathroom, and the sound guy probably heard me peeing, which is fine. I'm okay with somebody hearing me pee, right? You've heard girls pee, right? All the time. And did you get a boner? No, not, 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 yeah, not it's, recently. It's fine. So I was peeing, but while I was peeing, I also farted a little bit. <laughs> That happens to me every day. <laughs> yeah, but like not like even a big one, like not even an audible one. It was one of those like. Well, I used to work in reality TV, so I or I don't know if it's reality or not, but um, they like we part of my job was to sync up all the days, like all the footage. So like we'd see them, especially when they lived on set, we'd see them all day in the bathroom, all 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 that stuff. But I, I've I've never heard. I never saw anyone fart. Like, I never heard big farts. <laughs> you never they, heard big farts? No, no. I think probably you, uh, they probably turn the mics off if they know you're peeing. Because they probably don't want to listen to it. Oh, you think so? Yeah, probably. Or or maybe there are some sound guys who want to keep it on. Well, yeah, and, there's and some. They, and they like it. Yeah, well, I'm sure there's some sound guys, but. Probably most people turn it off. Oh, I'll just tell myself they turned it off. Yeah, yeah, they turned it off. Yeah. So okay. how? So how? What is the new project about, or whatever you can say about it? Um. Well, it's not a reality show. It's actually uh, an all-female sketch show. Oh, cool! Yeah, That's awesome. it's so cool. I'm having so much fun, and like when they send us the scripts, I'm like dying laughing reading the scripts the so day before. For a sketch show, are the scripts mostly like just uh, premises for the sketches, and then you improv it, or is it all? Uh, written out for you um a lot of it is written out but they let us improv also very, very cool which okay is, yeah which is so good so it's for it's for <laughs> <laughs> did you go to the bathroom yeah you took a shit no i don't do that stuff in public <laughs> i got respect for people <laughs> these people they go in public bathrooms and destroy that shit <laughs> um but yeah it's it's for seriously.tv oh very nice yeah so it's a web series. It's a it's a it's a digital show. A it's di amazing. A, a digital sketch show. It's amazing where Lee and I were just talking about this that maybe we should do a YouTube show or something, you know? Because uh -huh. I love the net. Yeah. I, I love the freedom of the internet. I'm too fucking old to go on network TV, and for them to say the word, you know, you can't say that word, you know? Like I, I'm too old, dog. Yeah, you should produce your own stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. I would definitely consider it. Like, I just shot this thing for a Animal Planet where I've become like an Anthony Bourdain of cats. I would go to different cities and talk to different cat things and learn and teach people about different things. Like, people really don't know about fucking cats, you know? How many cats you got? A bunch of them. What's with the questions? <laughs> 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 so, it's just the... Uh, you know, I, li I like the show to work out, you know, but in reality, you know, I say some crazy shit on Twitter. It's not that I plan it. I go by feeling, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we can't we can't control if what comes leave, out of our mouths If you leave me thumbs. an opening, I got to take that opening. You know, I was just listening to an old <laughs> tape from two weeks ago. I was saying some crazy shit. Even Lee goes, do you ever go dark? Every day, Lee. I live in the dark. That's the only way to get creative for guys like us that's what people don't understand yeah we have to live in the dark we put all, ourselves all in the, the time dark. so that you can enjoy a little light you know they 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 do all these specials about the dark side of comedy and the dark side of comedy comedy gets dark when you add the lethal weapon to it drugs okay jerry lewis didn't go kill themselves all these people didn't go hang themselves or kill themselves i'm not putting any disrespect on anybody you know, uh, Robin Williams was mentally ill. He, he got misdiagnosed and was prescribed the wrong medication, you know. We think with our heads. We go crazy. I go fucking crazy by myself sometimes. In the whole entire room, I'm hitting that vapor pen like a savage, you know. All jokes aside, but I, I'm reading this book right now that I only have a couple pages left in it. It's 
I've read it 10 fucking times. I read it to motivate me twice a year. It's called The uh, War of Art. Not the Sing Zhu one. This is a, a, a Stephen Pressler one. Um, a friend of mine turned me on to it when it first came out. Then a couple of years ago, Bert Kreischer popped his head up and said, whatever. So I went out and bought it again. I remembered it. And it talks a lot about fear. It talks like what you were talking about tonight, conquering your fear, resistance, all this fucking uh, stuff that, what were we talking about? Oh, the war of art. The war, no, no, before the war of art. Why did I The pop? art of war? The war of art. There's the art of war and the war of art. What's the war of art? Stephen Pressfield. <laughs> what? And he's a, a guy. Oh, that's a, my God. That's a writer. God, and he's amazing. a failed writer. And he writes... But he writes about the shit that keeps us from going where we're going. You know, he talks about your day on the computer. You know, he talks about how... Your rituals. You know that I just gave you $50,000. That's the cool. You got to write this fucking book. So you cancel the road work, and for a month you're going to write this book. So for the first fucking three days, you're basically going to sit there and look at that page, and then switch to Facebook... Switch to your phone, switch to Twitter, watch some porn. You're gonna rent. Go rent you're gonna rent a cabin in the woods right, in Massachusetts. All that, all that kind of shit. Yeah, but he's trying to tell you that if you sit down every day for two hours and force yourself to sit down, that's what the the most important thing I get in the book. But the book is sold to people. Like when he p talks about it, he says this is for anybody who wants that's ever been on a diet or quit. This is for anybody who's ever been in an organization and just quit. This is for, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is for people who just stop doing what they love doing because they didn't want to do the work side of it. They picked the easy road. It's called resistance. And we're all triggered by it. We all have it. You know what I'm saying? We all fucking have it. Until we get ourselves into a habit, into a swing of things, is when everything works out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Read the book. It's a great book. Okay, I can't. I don't know wait. why I fucking referenced it. I gotta drop because books. Because you're on dark. You. Yeah, because the darkness, man. Listen, I'm two different people than who I was from 2007 to 2017. You want me to tell you why? Drugs. 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 You gonna see Red Man tonight? I don't know. Are you gonna go to, he's at the store. He's got a show at the store. Oh, yeah? Stop down here on the way to the store. Say hello to Red Man. Tell him to put you up. And go, Red Man, do me a favor. Here's my email. Send me the Joey Diaz tapes from Vegas when he was talking about he was done. Look at those tapes and call me tomorrow and go, Joey, I don't know who that person is. I don't know who that person is. I have no idea who you were. That person talking that shit... That's a complete different person. That was 27 years of a beating and drugs. But the only reason why I had gotten that beaten was because of drugs. Are you with me? Yeah. <clears throat> that was the tail end. What was the strongest drug you were on? At that time, I would go to Vegas, all right, with Joe. And we were flying Thursday night. And the first thing I'd do, I had this number to this dude. The dude had so much juice that after a certain time in Vegas, you can't just walk on an elevator and go to the 18th floor. Do you know what I'm saying? You ever, you ever stay on the 9th floor and you try to come up and see me and all of a sudden they call me in my room, Lee, and I got to call downstairs, let Lee up, and they'll let Lee up because we're in two different sides of the hotel. Oh, it's the worst. That's the, what happened. Well, this guy would just ask you, what room are you in? 1809, call me when you get here. Won't need to. Next thing you know, I'd let him in. This guy would come in for a hundred dollars or something. He gave me an eight ball for one twenty. Give me a come down package, two Vicodins, <laughs> a Valium, and a Xanax. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I was banging out an eight ball a night. Jesus Christ! Plus all the pills. Plus I would buy extra fucking Xanax. I would come home on Sunday, toxic. Green, green. Three days of no sleep, maybe an hour here, an hour there. I've jerked off maybe 64 fucking times. <laughs> I even came, a nut sped out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, my body was building another nut. Like, I would just be a fucking mess. I would stay in my room with a notebook, 
there was a time, my friends, that, that the weekend I made that tape, let me tell you what's even sadder about that thing with Red Band. It's called The Joe Show. This was Joe Rogan's reality show that he was going to make everybody a star with. He was going to take us all into network television with this thing. Nobody bought it. But him and Red Man shot this, and it was pretty fucking creative for its time, you know? Like, it was pretty insane. It was five fucking seven guys on the road. Me, Joe, Red Band, Ari, Duncan, Tate Fletcher, Eddie Bravo. It was, it, it, it was insane. We'd pull up, and there'd be a van waiting for us at the airport. It was like a traveling boys band. So we would tape all these weekends. Duncan tapped out after all. This is crazy. This is too much. You guys eat too much red meat. No wonder you act like animals. You know, it was crazy. We taped all those until we just got down to me, Joe, and Red Man one weekend. And I'd been high two nights in a fucking row. I mean, no sleep high. Hiding from people. But that weekend that I tell you about, we did the House of Blues on Saturday. I flew in on Thursday night. I was like, Joe, we got to fly on Thursday. He's like, why? I'll tell you in the morning. Fuck you. I didn't say anything to nobody. He didn't see me till Saturday night. Like, nobody fucking saw me, dog. I had friends in Vegas that weekend that were visiting from New Jersey that were staying at the Bellagio. So they called me 80 times. And I really like 10 calls. I'd pick up and I'd go, dog, I'm rehearsing. I'm doing something for the UFC. Can I call you when I'm finished? <laughs> they kept calling me, oh, we're over here eating dinner. Why don't you join us? Give me 10 minutes. I'm, I'm doing something for Robert Goulet. I was just lying to them. This is 10 fucking years ago, Doug. I would not leave that hotel room. Just paranoia? By that point, it wasn't even paranoia. It was disgust. It was disdain. It was fucking the worst. It was the fucking worst. I was powerless. I was lucky I was showing up to gigs. I was lucky I was showing And at that time, I used to cancel on you on Friday, Esther Cool. You wouldn't even know I canceled on you until you got to the airport and went to pick me up. Oh, and wow. Then you, and then you'd call me and have go, these, wow. Have these clubs had you back since then? Those clubs are out of business. Oh, <laughs> Don't okay. matter. Fuck them. They get all sucked in my... Yeah. The two or three clubs I did it to are out of business. So I took a chance and I paid off. Slade's room and Pete, the uh, the Houston, both of them, both of them were waiting for me at the airport. Wow. I would get so fucking high, I'd get in my car, I'd drive to the airport, and then turn around and drive home. Jesus. That's how crazy I was at the end. Nobody would hire me. Yeah. It was a 50-50 chance. I didn't tell you how I felt, because I'd get so fucking high. Sometimes it worked on the way back. Sometimes I get so high, I wouldn't come home till Tuesday. We were always wondering where you were, Uncle. No, no, no. You didn't know me when I was crazy, <laughs> Esther. Me and Lee, we always like were like, Shit. what happened to Uncle Joey this Thanksgiving? No, that's why Remember? It, that's why it's so weird for me. Yeah. Because now he's like a boring... Like, <gasps> like... <laughs> I'll tell you. It's gotten to the point. I've known Joey for, I think, almost six years. I, I could almost pretty much tell you where he is based on the time of the day, the day of the week. Like, if I know his touring schedule, I know where he is. For this machine to work, I have to live my life <laughs> a certain way. You guys have a well oiled machine. No, no, not this machine. I'm talking about for this you, machine. Yep. For this machine to work. But listen, I didn't always know that, you know. I didn't always know that. It's not like I was born 21 and I was like, I know how this machine works. Nobody mm -hmm. knows how that machine works. Until you hit about 40, you've had a couple of failed things, things haven't worked out, and you figure it out. And every year you get a little stronger, believe it or not, you know. I mean, uh, that's the advantages of getting older, that you see the game a little tighter. You start cutting the fat off of your it, shit. It doesn't take as much time to make a decision. Right? You know No. No, not anymore. Yeah. No, no. Not anymore. But I still weigh the facts. Hey, man, I've made horrible decisions. Without checking or Googling. or I'm one of those assholes. Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. 
can you eventually pay for so many of those mistakes, you know? That's what being young is, guys, is making fucking mistakes. I sit there every day and drive my daughter. My wife drives. I sit in the passenger seat like fucking an idiot. And my little four-year-old in the back. And once we hit the 101, before you can make that right, we go straight. And for three minutes, Lee, I scared myself. What do you mean? Like, what's she going to do with her life? What happens if I die next year? How's she going to grow up? Is she going to end up a fucking stripper, a go-go dancer? Wait, how did we get there from just driving straight? You talked about going dark. Right? Okay, so you're just driving home. Yeah, I'm driving. The sun's out. It's a beautiful day to be alive. I just smoked fucking eight bowls in the backyard. I've been listening to music. I had a protein <laughs> shake. You know, I'm driving my daughter to fucking school. Who's better than me? Nobody. Who's got, um, I got the window open. My wife's got classic rock on. Fleetwood Mac is on. Hell yeah. Chains, whatever the fuck it is. And all of a sudden, my mind just goes, what's she going to do with her life? How much is college going to be? Will I even be alive to pay for fucking college? College is bullshit. And all you of don't, a sudden, no, You don't need I to go to college. I understand. Don't, this, wor don't worry about college. This is the thoughts that go through your mind. And then you go, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I thinking about that stuff? You know what? She's four. She's going to go through a thousand things in her life just like I did. All right? And guess what? You deal with it. And you do the best that you can, and you give them all the love. I love her with all my heart. I kiss my wife in front of her. She knows there's a lot of fucking love around her and shit. The cats love her. Lee comes over. We. It's our friend. It's our friend. We. We. Come in. Let me show you the bedroom. You know, shit like that, you know. So they uh, get it, but it, I still have my dark thoughts about her. Yeah. There's a thousand what ifs, you know. Right. I gotta be crazy not to go there with what I experienced in my life. You know what I'm saying? I found my mom when I was 16. I know how fast your life can change from one day to another. Do you think that thinking about it, though, is jinxing yourself? Sometimes I do. No. So, to be honest with you, I was raised not to think about right, that stuff. Right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, yeah. But you always have to go dark from time to time. Why? Just for five minutes. Just go, what if, bam. But then, but then also like? snap out of it. And snap out of it. You know, don't let it just, consume you. No, 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 you no, just, no, no. As soon as you're there, you're like, okay, hello, darkness. Hello, darkness. Goodbye. No, no, that's the... Hello, that's the darkness. That, that you were talking earlier. I'm quoting you, controlling your fear. Is turning off the darkness. That's all controlling the fear. It's the same you gotta, fucking You got to recognize when you go dark so that when you go dark, you don't stay there too long. Or else you'll be in trouble. And that, that works in life, too. What's up, Lisa? I on edibles. <laughs> Look at fucking that's the cool. Does anybody need to fart? No, no, I'm straight. What's going on, Lisa? <laughs> oh, oh, shit. I shit my pants in front of Paula for the first time. I didn't shit my pants, but I apparently had, like, a shitty day. And I had, like, some, uh, uh, what are they called? Hershey stains or whatever. And she saw them, and she's like, oh, shit, what are those? On your underwear? Yeah, I've never done that in front of a girlfriend before. Oh, she found them in your underwear? Yeah. It's okay. What Don't worry say? about it. Not that she wasn't mad. She was cool about it. <laughs> Wait, why would she be mad? Like, as if she's your mom. Because wait till he finds what's in her fucking underwear. <laughs> that yellow fucking stain of death with that, you know, they have that cat piss women. That little have, pad have is you, fucking you? yellow as death sometimes <laughs> and shit. Especially if they eat fucking cheese. You know, you know That's what you know what like, feels good, getting smoke literally blown up your ass. Well, listen, I don't need to know that stuff. <laughs> have you ever gotten that done? Ask her to do that for you. No, I haven't. Please tell her. Lee would get. If you would. She, you, if would Lee you would. You would be addicted that, to it. If let me explain something to you. If Lee asked her that. She would throw <laughs> Lee out of his own house. <laughs> Lee would be sleeping in the back house tonight. Be like, honey, can you just spread my butt cheeks open? And then blow a stream of air. No, but that's not how you say Breathe. it. You got to sit it down and go, listen, we've been doing edibles for a year. <laughs> and I got to tell you something. Joey's driving me crazy. <laughs> training, 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 training. But you can't laugh. Well, you got to look it straight in the face and go, listen, I need a big favor from you. I've never yeah. asked you for nothing. You're nothing. I got the bidet. You got to break down what you do in the scrub. I got this scrub. I got this little loofah. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to wash my asshole real good. I just want to test it because uh, 
Uh, I read in the medical journal, that's really good for your insides, and I'll get high. I want you to blow smoke up my ass. It, it What's your wife's it, name again? It prevents prostate. Paula. Paula. Tell her it prevents prostate cancer. Okay. What would you think she'd say to you, I believe, if you asked her just like that? Like, um, but you closed her. Like, closed her. The whole just, time you're closing. Just do it as... You know I love you, Paula, just right? Just do it I as we've been together. I would take your dog, but I can't have pets. You know what I'm saying? If it was up to me, your mother would live here with me, Paula. I'm asking you for one <laughs> thing. <laughs> do it. I'm Lee, asking you Lee, for one thing, Lee, if you don't Paula. do it, you're fired. Right, Uncle? I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash my muffler real good. I want you to You know what the fucked up thing is? I think like she'd be more open to that than she would be to like anal sex. Like that's that's a no no. Anal I know anal sex. Yeah, I mean, ha- listen. Let her have anal sex with your anus. No. Yeah. No, that's what she says too. No, that's every girl's thing. Is well, what if I? Yeah, because the more guys, the more no, guys, no. guys ask us to do anal ourselves, it makes me want to do anal to him. Listen, that's the cool anal sex talk. Makes me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. It okay, we don't. We don't have to stay there. No anal sex. Let's go back to something. No else. rapes. Oh. No, no. You guys, speaking of prisons, there's a prison in Delaware. There's a hostage situation. I know. I'm worried about my nephew who works at one of those prisons. He's a guard. I think they they left the guard loose, and they got a counselor and somebody else. You know what they're protesting? What? Trump. <laughs> <laughs> Even oh. prisoners are protesting wow. Trump. No. <laughs> they're protesting, uh, yeah, yeah, they're protesting the living conditions of the jail, and they fear it's going to get worse because Trump did a bunch of cuts. God damn it! So something's going on. So I don't fucking know. So yeah, my that heart sucks. goes out to those people. Yeah, I know that my dear friend's oldest son is a prison guard somewhere. I hope it's not fucking Selma. In fact, I thought somebody would call by now if it was, but nobody has called. I'm uh, sure they're fine. Yeah, yeah, no, everybody's I mean, the fucking chances up. that, yeah. Nobody's, nobody's fucked they up. They just want, they just want, um, thicker mattresses. Listen, man, I don't know what the fuck they want, but that's always scary. You know, when we shot the longest yard, we shot the longest yard at a jail that had a fucking, one of the worst riots in fucking prison history. They even wrote a book about it. The devil's butcher, the butcher's something. If you watch The Longest Yard, I, if I ever see it with you, I get a son in the bar and we're doing comedy, I go, that there's a set. That there's the prison. They couldn't, the prison was left so bad after the riot. They kept painting the floor, but there was so much blood on the floor that the color red would still creep up every year that's how much blood there was in the floor the blood was flowing like from all the people they murdered they cut off the guards heads and put them on oh sticks and shit God. yeah these motherfuckers got down i didn't know about this either till i shot the longest shot it's not like i sit there at home and watch discovery and ghosts and shit but the place was haunted there was a deal if you took a thousand dollars from the producer you could stay in there overnight. They gave you a thousand dollars. Two people did it. They couldn't spend the night in there. Were they filming you? Like, no, no, no. Just go in there. We'll lock the door from the outside. God. They, I don't like that shit. They up. couldn't make it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, fuck all that shit. I had a window. Why, why are you taking me to these dark places, fucking? I had a window cool. across from me when I was growing up, like in my bedroom. I, like if I opened my eyes, there was a window. And I was always convinced that there was gonna be like a ghost or a monster or something just pop. I put I put like a Lego piece in front of my closet door. Why? Because the closet went to the attic, and if somebody opened the door and came in from the attic, I would see that the Lego piece moved. How old were you when you came up with this fucking device? <laughs> like seven. Did your dad teach us? No, I just thought of it. That doesn't make any sense. Because my closet door led up to the attic. Right, but the Lego piece isn't going to scare anybody. Right, no, like it's, not, it's not meant to scare. I just not wanted no, to see no, if no. it moved. Yeah, see if it moved, Lee. So some people if put a piece of... Like open the door. Like when you go to a hotel and yeah. you carry drugs in the hotel and you put a do not disturb thing, you get a little piece of tape and you put it on the bottom of the door. <gasps> Why? 
To see I, if you're doing drugs? No. So if somebody opens the door, you can see that they fuck with the tape. So you take a little inch of clear tape. When you check, I mean, when you close the door, you close the door, boom, boom. You're outside of the hotel. There's maids. It's a nice hotel. You got 20 kilos of blow in there. Let's say you got to go downstairs for two minutes. Usually, if you travel like that, you have somebody in the room, like a grandma, watching a coke. You don't even stay in that room. You stay in another room on the other side of the hotel. But let's say you're in that predicament that you're by yourself. You have weapons in there. You put the do not disturb sign. You take clear tape. You take a little piece, and you put it on the bottom of the door on the edge. So when they walk in, they break the tape. You can tell if somebody went in your door. What the fuck are you people looking yeah, at? Yeah, but they already have their stuff then. You have to set up weapons. Because you know, sometimes you just want to know if somebody goes in there. Mm. Nobody's going to take them. You just want to see if a maid goes in there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I guess. So you put the tape there? No. The guy next to me does. Yeah, you put the <laughs> fucking tape there. <laughs> It's a, it's a service that the hotel offers? <laughs> yeah. No, I call so the maintenance you, guy and I go, so come you, here for a you, second. Do you travel with tape? I travel with everything. I'm always ready for that counter surveillance. Oh, now I got to add tra- tape to my list. I got two bags of counter surveillance stuff. One in my bag and one in my travel bag. <laughs> I'm like a fucking green commando dog. <laughs> oh, my God. I got so much shit in my sleep apnea bag. You would. Die. I got speakers, wires, <laughs> extra glasses pens an ipod i got fucking there's always an edible somewhere in that motherfucker disguised as a fucking pencil or something you know what i'm saying i always got something and i got my sleep apnea machine now i got a smaller machine so now oh my god guess what oh shit i got fucking jet blue on sale today in new york and shit mint like a motherfucker guess what oh bro? shit guess what roly one a two boom two oh, i got the room yeah. all to myself you know how we do dude fuck that yeah mint, those lay down mint seats oh fuck yeah the pl- i don't even sleep saturday night but it don't matter because i'm gonna get on the plane stone to the gills I will eat a little breakfast, a little three-piece combination. I'm in that bunk by myself, so I put the sleep apnea machine right on the floor. I put the fucking thing on. I press go. And the next thing you know, Mr. Diaz, Mr. Diaz, we're landing in LAX in 20 seconds. Put a, put away your machine. I get up by Joe Tip Top Magoo. I get in my little fucking car, and I drive home on the 405. At 905, I get back in the morning. Nothing's even happening on the Lord's Day at 905. What the fuck you think you're dealing with? That's the cool. You gotta prepare. You gotta be organized. Do you understand me? Yeah, I love getting organized. So what have you done to look differently? Have you gotten more grown up? If I last seen you, you look more elegant. Um, I started so, taking showers. All right, no, no, on the straight side. Are you <laughs> modeling again? What are you doing? You look like very, uh, <laughs> very bourgeois, quoi, quoi. You know what I'm saying, as they say. Oh well. Don't criticize my French. It's very. <laughs> It's very contemporary. Uh, parlez-vous, quoi, quoi. What are you eating? I'm eating a star. Stop fucking eating that star. Oh, okay, because okay. you're going to black out. And, you know, okay. I don't wanna, next thing you know, you're going to be at Cosby's house jumping up and down with his nephews uh. and shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's got nephews your age. You know what I'm saying? You don't need the aggravation in your life. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Imagine that's like a nightmare. Bill Cosby's nephew starts doing comedy. No, Bill Cosby's nephew brings you over, gives you a star of death, and comes on your feet when you're sleeping. That's fucked up, all right? Well, better my feet than... And, and, kill, and Bill Cosby tapes the whole thing. Now. What is it with you on coming on people's feet and it's neck? A, it's and dog. It's something I I've learned met, in the early 80s. You my know feet saying? have never been cummed on. Well, that's what you get for being a fucking stiff LaRue. You gotta have somebody <laughs> shoot a load on your toe. I mean, I've uh, def- uh, definitely given foot jobs before. No, I understand. So like, just have them blast off on your little heel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look that you've definitely given foot job. You don't know what life is till somebody blasts a load on your ankle and shit and drips Listen, into the shower. You gotta get creative, you know. While you're in the shower. You can't the just ca- do it regular missionary style no, every day. No. While you're in the shower, the cat's licking what came off your foot. There's a little puddle of cum that's been out there for like twelve <laughs> minutes. The cat starts licking it. Wow. After, after eight minutes, it goes bad. So it becomes fucking feral milk, whatever the fuck. It becomes know. yellow yeah. and hard and crusted, stained. Oh, you motherfuckers are crazy. Wow. It becomes like the side of a candle, you know, when it's dripping and it solidifies. 
Let me give some shout outs here. <laughs> Real quick here. Levin Asodarian. Asodarian. Asadurian, Joey. Asa fucking Durian. He's Armenian. What the fuck is wrong with you? That's right. I'm very sorry, dog. Levin Asadurian. Shelby Alexis. Corey Layton. Steve Baca. NoHo MMA. Congratulations on opening up your school. Wes Woods. Dante Gazzini. Thank you for the album, cocksucker. Matt South. Tony Zero. Fuckaroo Magoo Esquire. Dante, I got the album. You know I love you. I went and got Eric Clapton today, but I left them both in my room on the floor like a fucking moron. So my apologies. I appreciate the album. He sent it to the store with a CD of debt. I almost crashed the fucking car listening to that stuff. You got people jumping up and down and trumpets. I'm an old man, Dante Gazzini. I think Levin Alzadorian might be a Jewish Armenian guy. So what what gave you yes, the sir. inkling? Look at my face. What gave you the inkling? Yes, sir. That for any reason I gave a fuck whether he was a Jew or Armenian. Or You're Armenian. always on the lookout for Jews. If you find well, a Jew. if he's mixed with Armenian, he could be a Dutch. Exactly. That's you know what no, no, what I'm saying. No, he could be a super. But he listens to the podcast, so exactly. he could be a tight motherfucker. You know? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm on, I'm on the lookout. What are you thinking, Esther? Cool. You're in no danger. You understand me? Get it together. Yeah, I'm good. Esther, cool. Do you have stockings on? I do. Why do you? What do you, what do you work at Hooters? No. <laughs> what the fuck? I saw that before. I saw your feet. I go, this year's stockings are. Because it's chilly out. So who gives a fuck? That's what being in California, you can't be putting stockings on. That's the cool. What's wrong with stockings? It just gives it that uh, boucle effect. I thought I thought I thought all proper women wore stockings. Fuck that! Yeah, if you're fucking forty eight. I know. I don't want somebody to I see got, your legs got, and shit. I got cursed with an old lady's name. What what's that? Esther. So yeah, so rip off the stockings. What are you hiding? You know I know. I mean What's the fucking problem here? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have wrong with I you? have no problem. I wear shorts all the time. I, no, I didn't I didn't insult I'm not insulting you here, but why yeah. you gotta show up here with stockings? I don't normally wear stockings. I haven't stopped thinking about hooters and the bad wings and I haven't lung I don't I don't normally shit. wear stockings. Now <sighs> you're making me like be embarrassed about wearing stockings. Listen, you wanna bust out black black stockings. I'm all in. But you're going to show up with grandma stockings. You can't do that. <laughs> oh, shit. You got like the brown crowd that's all together. I wasn't prepared shit, to you know be roasted here. No, I'm not roasting. You know, yeah, my, you me know. and my stockings. You know I love I'm you so that, embarrassed. That, you know, no, no, no. I love you. I can't believe a lot of people don't do that. That's why you're so original. I like that you're wearing stockings. Women come out with those fucking legs. They got a, a bruise on their fucking ankle. I got to see it. You know what I'm saying? Put stockings on. No, I have no problem. I get bruises <laughs> no, all the I'm time. I'm kidding you. That's the cool. You know, I'm, I'm on my knees you. all the time. That's the cool. <laughs> Listen to me. What? If you wait a little star and you're fucking out there in Planet Zero, <laughs> think of where I'm at right now. I don't even know nothing. I don't know nothing. Don't don't take me for granted. All right? I don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. Nothing. Lee, what's going on with you? What are you doing this weekend? Shock me. Oh, what, what terrible things am I doing this weekend? What can I tell you that's terrible? Ahead. What is it? You're going to go see Bad Santa 3, The Making Of? What are you going to go see now? Go ahead. I know I know. there's a plan this weekend. No, I... I uh, well, you talked the girlfriend into dropping off LAX. That's a yes, start I did. Right Yeah, there. she's going to go down. Just Uber her down. Get, no, 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 no. Lift her down there, you know, on the arm. Call Lyft, tell him, listen. Let me lift Mama down there and shit. Drop her off. Stay. Don't come back till nine o'clock. And he won two cases. Nine o'clock. <laughs> and you gotta win two cases. You know what I'm saying? Don't come back till you win two cases. I don't give a fuck. Eighteen years of law school. You went to France. I had to sit at home for a whole summer jerking off into a fucking donut, <laughs> hanging out with Joey, talking disgusting things, eating edibles, and you want to show up here? Don't come back till you won two cases, and you set a federal fucking appeal. That's what, uh, that's what and I'll, someday what are you doing you know what you're doing back to LAX one more time <laughs> to get another two fucking cases oh my god that's how you become an attorney I told him your girlfriend wants to become an attorney she can't find the job you want to get a job go down to LAX talk to those poor fucking Arabian people that are stuck in that fucking airport <laughs> Malaysia whatever the fuck they're from I don't fucking know he's bad in 19 I don't know no more listen People, I'm not political. I never claim to be political. I don't want to be political. But this is the first time in my 54 years. Like I'm 53, but two weeks. Who gives a fuck? 
I'm sitting here going, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, every time I watch TV, this guy, this is, how long is this going to last? For four what, years. What? No, no. You could impeach, right? Uh, well, the pe- they can, people can't make I mean, them impeach. So. Listen to me. I have been in this city for 20 years around this. In 1995, I signed with an agent. <laughs> that was very literal, like a very literal guy. Like he would always said, he hated auditions. He hated comedians going on the road. Wow. He, he wanted comedians. No way. That's horrible. He wanted comedians to, if you signed with him, to at least have a project that you were always writing because he had producers that he could hook you up with. And he did. He pitched a lot in this town. Wow. But his one caveat was that you couldn't leave. Huh? His one thing is that he didn't want you to leave. You couldn't leave town. No. What was I talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I have to pee so bad. Well, get up and fucking pee. What are you sitting there like a Mormon for? <laughs> You're sitting there like, you know. You know what, man? Take some paper in there. There's no toilet paper in there, which is disgusting. I don't know why. I got I got uh, tissue paper, but if things are bad... No. Got this sanitizer here. No, take the this tissue paper fun. with you. I just take the tissue paper. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, where is it? Just, uh, just make it right there. Okay. Don't pay attention to the camera. It's got no batteries. Well, Lee, what the fuck? Where has this podcast gone to? We've gone 18 different fucking directions. Nobody knows nothing. I apologize. What, what can I do? What can I say? Nothing. You can't say nothing. I'm not mad at you. You're the Captain Kirk of the Enterprise. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here just going for a ride. It's February 1st. We figured we're in for a fucking crazy night tonight. We're always in for a crazy night at the church. It's funny because you, you called me with that advice for Paula yesterday. And Paula was in the other room. And she was like, who was that? I was like, who's Joey? She's like, what did he say? I was like, huh? Because you always have to like translate Joey's advice. Because <laughs> I think your direct advice was, get your fucking wife down to LAX. <laughs> And, but like yeah she it, it's uh she's excited about it. it and it's 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 fun and it's weird when you have a job let me ask you this when you have a job that you like it's almost it's kind of hard to think about she the work have, that she, you did she doesn't have a job that she no likes. i know I, I know i know she, she doesn't went to school for four years but here's the beauty of Italy. she's gonna see something she's never seen before and it's gonna bring something out of her and she'll make her decisions right there on what she wants to do this and that. This is what the best thing about throwing it to the wolves was. Let her go down there. You added a, a tremendous point. You said she's going to go down there and meet people. She's going to meet other attorneys at that fucking place, you know. So, listen, it gets her out of the house, Lee. And it gets her, listen, me going on open mic and Paula going down there and trying to play attorney is the same fucking difference, Lee. Absolutely. It's the same difference. I'm trying to find my voice, and Paula is trying to find hers. This is her shot. You go to college. For, let me tell you something, Lee. If I went to college for four years, and then three more, and then took the bar, what do you think I'd be talking about at 5, 3 in the morning to you about? This is something I worked for. Right, you, yeah. This isn't me on a bus cracking stupid jokes. I would act like a fucking wild savage. As soon as I pass the bar, first thing I do is get a fucking walkie-talkie and a fucking whatever. And every time there's an accident, I'm down there pro bono and motherfuckers to death on an accident. Learning along the way, Lee. Right. Learning along the way. This this is my style. You can't find a job, but you're living with your fucking parents and you got somebody helping you out. Believe my line to you. No, and that's what you have. It might be disrespectful here. Not at all. The least you could do is get twenty five fucking cards, get a walkie talkie. Remember last year you and Salami were fucking whenever somebody would uh, make a left turn and go into somebody's pole. You would get a call to go take a picture of it, and whoever got the picture of it got $55 in the mail a year later. Right. Same fucking difference. Every time a car goes into a pole, you get on your bicycle, you go down and you interview the motherfucker. <laughs> if the light ain't working, listen, let me take you to the hospital on my bicycle. Let's get the paperwork started. 
And listen, when you sue that motherfucker, I'm going to do the... That's how you learn. Guess what Paula does Tuesday? She walks into Machinowitz, Machinowitz, and Machinowitz and says, listen, <laughs> I'm an attorney. I got a number. I went to USC, but you might not want to hire me, but let me tell you something. Before I even drop this bomb on you, <laughs> I'm Spanish. I hablo espanol. I can do the commercials for you, but, and I'm showing up with an envelope. What are you talking about, Miss Paula Paula? Well, I'll tell you what I'm fucking talking about. I got a guy that was walking down the street, minding his own business, whistling. You know what I'm saying? Whistling. Listening to an iPod, minding his own business on the streets of L.A., and he fell into a sinkhole <laughs> that was fucking five feet. Nothing happened to him, but it wasn't the sinkhole that killed him. He hurt his ankle. He twisted the toe. Wow. It was the tree he that fell on top he of his... survived a sinkhole? Yeah, it was only four feet. It's a, it's a tree that fell on top of his fucking head. <laughs> and now the guy don't even know what day it is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. I, I don't even know what my point was that. Well, no, but you have to put your... The, my, like, you have to put yourself in this situation. You have to go intern. You have to go do... Like, I've talked against... At, at, at a certain point, you're done with free work. But when you're first starting out... You're always down with free work. Yeah, you have to be. You're always down with free work because there's days you might learn something for free what most people pay to learn. You might see somebody do something magical right in front of your eyes that will open your mind. Well, oh yeah. And I'm not sure what the time for of it is for lawyers, but from when you're first, like for me, when I got out of college, after four years of college, the first year and a half of being an assistant editor was just learning everything new everything was new and I would have to imagine a lot of being a lawyer that they, they can't teach you at law school I've even heard her talk about that so I'm not sure I'm not sure how long the, the learning curve is but 18 months it has to be at listen, least listen you're a girl your dad was an attorney he gets hit by a fucking uh he gets hit by a celery truck when you're 11. <laughs> he was one of the best attorneys of all time. You want to fucking live his memory, you become a fucking attorney. Okay. Okay? You know what? You get a fucking job, and the guy that runs the firm has four daughters. He's happily married. He sees you. He sees something in you. You see something in him. And pretty soon, you guys build like a fatherly fucking bond. Okay? Guess what? You go to work for that motherfucker. He's an old Jew. Just from being around that guy. Even if that guy says to you, go and uh, alphabetize these files, there's always a payoff. Meanwhile, while you're doing what he told you to do, what you think is feeble, what you think is so feeble, you're above. Like, I remember being out in the field and being a fucking know-it-all, you know what I'm saying? And like, I'm like, me doing this? This is fucking, I didn't, you know, I didn't come here to do this. But he's saying, you don't understand. For you to do that, you got to do this first so you understand that. You know, and you have to do, how long do I have to do this for? A fucking year until you really see what we're talking about. That I could come back to you and go, it's 38 degrees. I need the mud to fucking dry in 3.5 minutes. And you're making concrete or something like that. You know, I'm taking it out of content, but with an attorney, what Paul is going to learn in 18 months is going to be invaluable, whether she goes to the prosecutor's office or a fucking badass attorney. Like, if you're around Cochran, let's say you get a job with, like, God forbid, whatever his fucking name is, God rest his soul, Johnny Cochran, he died. That guy, when he, when he tried the OJ trial, he was at his best. Can you imagine being around that guy? You're his intern for a year and a half during the OJ trial. You're going to see all the paperwork, all the motions, all the motions to suppress. You're going to see all this stuff. How much are you going to fucking learn? And that, but that, What kind of education is that? Huge. Huge. And, huge. Huge. And, but you said the word, the perfect word you said was see. Because that's what you're going to do. You're not going to, you don't really get to ask questions. I wanna, you don't get to really talk. Yes, you do, Lee. I don't know. You know what, you Lee? Think so? At 9 fucking 30. At 9.30 at night. You, okay. know, you know me, Lee. You know I'm going to be in that office. If I'm a fucking Jew and I'm making it fucking work for me, you know me, dog. I work all hours. <laughs> I get up with insomnia, I go work an hour. Who gives a fuck? 
at 9.30 when Paula says good night, Phil. And she goes, good night, Paula. Uh, be safe. Is Lee waiting for you outside? Yes, he is. Thank you for asking. That's when Paula says, can I ask you a question? Today, why did you file that motion to move whatever? And this guy will go, first off, the motion is not going to fly. I sent it out with Judge Paxton. Judge Paxton fucking hates me. But I did that for a reason. I did that to throw them off here. To make them think I'm changing courts or whatever or venues. Everything is a move with those high priced attorneys. When an attorney looks at you and he goes, Give me five grand. And you're like, Man, that's expensive. And Austin, there's another guy that goes, Ask to come here for a second. That problem you had, you're looking at some prison time. Listen to me. You're going to do four years in jail, Esther. You're going to lose your career. Okay, you might come out a hero or you might come out a convict. We're not going to know. Why are we going to throw the dice? You're too young right now to go to prison. What if, give me 100 grand cash and I get you six years probation. Do two years straight, stay out of the clubs, don't go fucking drinking, don't get caught doing nothing. And after two years, I'll get it all dropped and it goes away. Donate a show to breast cancer and go talk to some chicks who've been kicked in the head 15 times and we'll get you off your thing. What would you do, Esther? Cool. You follow? But you'll see the difference. You'll see the difference. You'll see how this guy will go, okay, let's go to work tomorrow. Next thing you know, you're getting this paperwork and he's requesting this shit and doing this shit and you're like, wow. And he, this part, this part so you get mad at him. You're like, this motherfucker I gave him 100000 fucking dollars. And now I'm going to end up fucking going to jail. And all of a sudden, you go like the preliminary hearing, and he rips a fucking rabbit out of his asshole. And you're like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. I didn't even see this coming. I've been watching Law & Order for 20 fucking years, and I didn't see this coming. And all of a sudden, again, he takes you on a fucking six-month tour. But your life is on the line. You know what I'm saying? Your life is on the line. You want to know what's going on. He's not going to tell you. He's not going to tell you until it's trial time or time to fucking negotiate your fucking uh, plea agreement. That's when you get blown the fuck away. That's when you go in there and he breaks it down for you. This is why I did this. If you went in there as this, you're going to end up as this. This is, And you sit there and you go, thank you. Thank you for not robbing me. You know what I'm saying? This is the payoff I wanted. Everything you told me would happen, happened. You with me, Esther Cool, or you some fucking where else seeing stars and little bunny Somebody rabbit? dropped me off at the Little Dipper. Good. That's what I figured this shit. <laughs> the Little Dipper. Let me give, let me read some stuff here, and we'll get you out of here. I'm really excited about this one. Let me tell you what happened, guys, about uh, September with all that fucking, those tours and the weeks before the CD. I, uh... I threw out my back. I don't know how the fuck I did it. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't call I didn't uh call around or nothing like that. So uh I went to this place called Back uh whatever. I don't even know what the fuck it was. And I went in there and it was uh it was pretty fucking damn good. I went there twice and they hooked me up. You know, they gave me a massage, and then they they put you through a chiropractor, which I had never experienced before. And your insurance pays for it. They put you to like wow, a... Wow, your insurance pays for it. Sag. Yeah. Yeah, like a 45-minute massage. I mean, I, I think the, the thing is uh, $49, and Sag picks up 28 of it or something. I'm good. I'm good. I gave her a 20 tip. What do I give a fuck? I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Sag picked up half of it. I'm still going to give it to her off the top. So the girl gives you a massage. Then the chiropractor comes in right next to her. She puts you on the chiropractic table. She fucking hits some place on my back. Everything. She put tape on my back to hold the treatment. She adjusted my neck. It was tremendous. I went there twice. And that's the cool before that. I had never, ever, ever really gotten a massage. You know, my wife rubs my shoulders and stuff like that but uh <laughs> i got this call a few weeks ago chiropractors are awesome aren't they well, all that stuff you know but yeah but 
I got this call a few weeks ago to, uh, to you know, if I was interested in talking about a massage company that would come on, and uh, and I read what they did, and I'll tell you something. I was blown away. You could order a masseuse online and temper online, one, two, three, they come to your house on time, effective, great reviews. I said, yeah, I'd love to work with them. You know, so this Valentine's Day, don't fight the crowds with a big night out. Don't worry about making reservations. Turn your home into a luxury spa with your own private massage with zeal. Here's an idea to make Valentine's easy. Get a couple's massage night at home with a private licensed massage therapist from zeal. It's an easy way to win Valentine's Day. Bring the massage to you with Couples Massage from Zeal. Just go to zeal.com or go on Zeal's iPhone or Android app. That's Zeal, spent Z-E-E-L dot com and select top local licensed and pre-screen massage therapists. Choose your favorite technique, gender preference, time, and location of your massage. Zeal will send one of their 8,000 licensed massage therapists with a massage table, music, and supplies to give you a five-star massage. Scheduling, booking, and payment is fast and easy. Even the tip is included. Seven days a week, 365 days a year, and a Zeal massage therapist can be in your door in as little as one hour. Privacy, convenience, quality, comfort, that's what you get with your massage on demand with Zeal. Find out for yourself why Zeal has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Vogue, and Good Morning America. To help you get started, our listeners can get $25 off the first massage by using promo code CHURCH at checkout. That's Zeal, spelled Z-E-E-L dot com. And then make sure to click add promo code at checkout to use my code CHURCH. C-H-U-R-C-H. Right now, go to zeal.com or on Zeal's iPhone or Android app and get a special offer when you try Zeal today, right now. Enter promo code CHURCH at checkout to get a $25 off in your home on-demand massage. Who's better than you, okay? Listen, it's Valentine's Day. What are you doing? You're going to go to a restaurant. You're going to give her some fucking dead rose. You're going to give her some dead rose. What are you going to do? Do the same thing you do every year. You know what? Do something different. Go to the supermarket, get some fried chicken, go home. Schedule the masseuse. When was the last time you ate fried chicken and had a massage? A masseuse, come to your door. you need to treat yourself. Oh, please. You know know? I'm a savage. You know I'm a savage in heat. I love getting getting massages. No, they're tremendous. Massages, getting massaged is like just making sure your body continues to like work right. You know? You go out there, you're running all your errands and all this shit. You gotta like make sure your body like flows. Like you gotta knead it out. It's like your body's like a piece of bread. I with, hear you. With pretzels in it. I hear you. Well, right now, go to zeal.com or on Zeal's iPhone or Android app and get a special offer when you try Zeal today. Enter promo code CHURCH at checkout to get $25 off your first in home on demand massage. You're gonna love this stuff. Number two. One of my all-time favorites right here. As Lee told you in the beginning, the days are back. The days of walking around, you don't know what's wrong. Your asshole's itchy, but not really. Your underwear is tucked in there, but something don't fit. It's all over! The days are back, baby. In-home, portable bidets sent right to your home. Takes what to install it, Lee? 20 minutes tops. 20 minutes tops. And if Lee can install it, Anybody can install. Oh, yeah, you guys can do it in like installations. 10. So let me tell you something. What is it? Clip onto the bowl? It clips yeah, onto it, the bowl. Easy peasy. It, you just take the, the the bowl, the lid off. Like it just screws off onto the bottom or however the your uh, toilet lid t- comes off. Put the, the uh, t- Hello Tushy down. Put the lid back on. It's easy. And then it's a little couple. They have a little adapter on the uh, for the uh, where the water goes into the toilet. It take, Yeah, it takes 20 minutes. People, you have no idea. You're sitting there at your desk all day. You know what happens to your ass? You get mold, mildew, hemorrhoids, bacteria. Those days are done. 
Because now you can stop by the house and you got the portable bidet and you're living like a doctor. These things get shipped to your house. They got a 60-day guarantee. And now they're doing a Valentine's Day special. Well, they're going to send you two bidets, free shipping to your house. That's it. Two bidets. One for him, one for her. You put one in the garage so he can go down there and shit himself to death. Then he can wash his ass and light a candle and a box of fucking matches. And one for you upstairs in the bathroom, you know, with the pink carpeting, with the candles on. Everything's beautiful. Listen to Barbara Streisand. There you are with cold or hot water hitting your asshole like a doctor. Why be a fucking orphan? Get two for Valentine's Day and HelloTushy.com or throw your free shipping. Go to HelloTushy.com right now and press in. Church. Bam! Get 10% off your order. You understand me? Get two of them, get free shipping. And if you don't, give it to somebody you like. You ever look at somebody and you go, that dude's asshole smells. Bam, that's your victim. Do something good for them. You ever look at somebody like a woman and go, you know what? She's attractive, but I could tell her pussy stinks like 10 dead fucking Iranians. Bam! <laughs> that's who you give a hello tushy to. You know what I'm saying? I, one for the office. I don't know. If I, if I, if I worked in an office... Why not? Yeah, no, the whole fucking deal. Everyone Guys, this is the deal day? of a lifetime. I love them. I love Wh- them as a company. Where does the water come from? The, it just comes from the the water that's going to go into the toilet. It just it, 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 it's it, a hose from the inside of the toilet that goes up. No, it, 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 it's 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 the water line that's going into the toilet. They have a splitter, and the splitter goes, and it's and now you connect it back in so you can flush, and then the other one goes to the to the uh, hello tushy, and then that's when you do the. The little dial. See, I know. I How know. fucking cool is that, dog? You're going to order one when you get home. Go to hellotushy.com right now and press in. Church. And get 10% off your order or two of them for Valentine's Day special till the 14th and get free shipping. Yeah, sent to seriously, your house. guys, do this it. This is right it. Now. This is it. You can dip your nutsack in it. It's beautiful, and you got a 60-day <laughs> money-back guarantee, all right? I want to thank Zeal. Give back to the church. Zeal.com right now, right? And I want to thank. Hello Tushy. Hello Tushy.com. And I want to thank uh, my girl Esther Koo for coming on. And on it. Always a fucking pleasure. And I want to thank On It for being the Captain Kirk of the Enterprise. Always go to On It and get 10% off by pressing in. Church. Bam. And get direct to your house, whether it's the Shroom Tech, the uh, the Hemp Force Protein. I love all that fucking stuff. Have a great week. And when you're done we'll listening you guys to Monday, the church, right? you can listen to Koo and the Gang. Go listen to Koo and the Gang on iTunes, all right? Lee, I love you, cocksucker. Love you too, man. You didn't tell me what you're going to do, so that means I don't want to. I'm not really doing shit, I guess. All right, stay black. Have a great weekend, guys. I love you. Where are you oh, going? Nashville. Yeah. Tomorrow, bitches. Don't forget Valentine's Day. I'm at motherfucking Flappers up here in Burbank. Nine o'clock show, all right? But this weekend, Nashville. Tomorrow night, eight o'clock show. Stay black.